This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 220. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm um, Blake. And I'm back. The Power Bottom is back. And you have a Minnesota Vikings shirt this week. Yes, I do. Uh, who, what's your uh, number? Who is that? Is that Thielen? Kyle Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph. Oh, Cincinnati. still play for the Vikings? Still plays for the Vikings. You're lying. He oh. really does. He really what? does. <laughs> He, he does because I'm the Cleveland Browns in a franchise now. Uh, soon to be the Portland River Hogs. Yeah. But uh, I'm, uh, I was trying to get trade for Kyle Rudolph, and they kept saying no. So I had to mm. trade for David Johnson. So. Talk, talking about sports names and moving. Mm-hmm. Seattle uh, uh, hockey, oh. uh, hockey franchise. The Cobains. The mayor may have uh, tweeted out a spoiler <laughs> on their name. They have the new right, they have the light rail system yeah. going from Vancouver to uh, Seattle. And he said, this is going to be a great with this uh, light rail uh, series, uh, the Canucks versus the Totems. I like it. Oh, that's going to cause a lot of problems. Eh, well, well not necessarily. The, uh, the, you know, the Seattle no, Totems were a hockey yeah. team from the... Uh, uh, back in the fifties and sixties, so I would have gone. So, I like the totems. Yes, but technically they're not human faces. <laughs> yeah, Des, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's <laughs> if you if you want to lecture, <laughs> then go ahead and do it. <laughs> we're not a history podcast. Wait, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are a history. Unlike those guys at Shot of History, we're actually a history podcast. <laughs> we research everything or nothing, <laughs> whatever. One of the two. One of we're in between. I, right I until taken, proven wrong. When do they start? Is that next year? Uh, I believe two years. Is that two years? Uh, I still wish Quebec yeah. would have gotten it. Yeah, they, they I, still, they, Quebec, I still like to send it back to Hartford. I would have taken You know what? Move the Florida Panthers back to Hartford. Because you know why? Nobody cares in Florida about hockey. Oh, yeah. Tell that to my cousins. Okay, besides those three people, <laughs> no one cares about hockey. Okay, any. besides non-native Floridians... Yes. Are they from Florida? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Never mind. Well, no, my cousin actually is from uh, here, but his wife, who is the huge hockey fan, and her children, who are hockey goalies in high school in South Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they, they love. They play hockey down there? They do. I'm impressed. I, I'm just not kidding. I'm impressed that they have high school hockey down there. How do they avoid the alligators on the ponds? They freeze them over. And they, yeah, but they would be kind of bumpy to hit the puck over. Put enough they? ice in there or enough water in there before you freeze it over. Okay. And okay. they're below it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, as long as you're above seven, they're, the alligators aren't going to eat you. So you're okay. Oh, okay. So don't go to Disney is what you're saying. Correct. <laughs> For many reasons. <laughs> but number one, alligators will eat you. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing hockey in uh, Canada, all you have to worry about are polar bears. I mean, you don't have to worry about. Alligators. Penguins. Penguins. 
Yeah. There they, are no penguins in Canada except maybe the zoos. Well, yeah, but if they get out, they could be ill-tempered. <laughs> Everybody knows penguins are native to Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, champions. Thank you, Stanley Cup champions. And apparently, according to Jason Sweatshirt, native to Wilkesbury. Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Wilkesbury, my, uh, Scranton. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Wilkesbury, Scranton, uh, Pittsburgh's uh, jersey or uh, sweatshirt on tonight. So Pittsburgh, I represent you, buddy. Uh, let's see. No, you're representing Wilkesbury, Wilkesbury Scranton. Scranton. Well, yeah, but all the <laughs> shut up, uh, Jim. Thanks for the porgs. Uh, Pez dispenser this week? Oh, no problem. I don't know whether to thank you or curse you. <laughs> you don't get milk from it. It's not like a seal that uh, Luke, or, uh, Luke Skywalker is getting. They Pe- didn't have any of the seal uh, Pez dispensers. How great mm. if the seal says Pez dispenser would be the whole thing, and then the nipple would be where the Pez comes out. <laughs> I like okay, that. Okay, now mm. we've got a business mm. idea. Yeah! <laughs> I, can, can we do Shark Tank? Trademark. <laughs> trademark. I, I, I still like the, the alien Pez dispenser is maybe my favorite one I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. The actual alien from uh-huh. the movie? Yes. yes. And he spits out the Pez from his mouth, his baby mouth. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, yeah, the inside mouth brings out the Pez. Uh, Jim, we'll get right to this here. You weren't here last week, and no. Xavier lost. It's my fault they lost. Okay. So we got some questions for you here. You ready? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, we got, I think, just one, actually. Uh, <laughs> toughest loss in the tournament, Xavier, UC, Virginia, North Carolina, Michigan State, or Arizona? I think easily it's Virginia. The, six, the one seed losing to the 16, uh, and not just losing, just absolutely getting their doors blown off. 20 points was the final, I think. 74 to 54. They yeah. looked Horrible. I did not we, just the number one, not a number one, but the, the number, number one. one. Getting beat by the number the sixty third seed. I would have been fine if Villanova was the number one overall seed. I thought they probably deserved it. I think I had no problem with Virginia being the number one overall seed, but they had they had an injury where uh, their sixth man, the most athletic person, got hurt and Hunter. Ah. But that's it. Still has no reason why a sixteen seed comes and just rolls you. Well. Um, Hunter McAllister was actually not injured. They just didn't pay him enough to show up. That was the issue. But it was oh, Calipari doesn't coach them. That's true. <laughs> uh, but they just they didn't look well. And the way they play, that slow down way they play, and they limit possessions, and they they win a lot of games, sixty to forty. Well, when they got down by eleven or twelve, they just didn't have the offense to actually make a run and come back. Can we say the Labradors of UMBC, uh, can, their jerseys look like something you would wear in high school. They look like, uh, when they were showed up, I was like, is this a high school team? Like, well, even the kid, the guys on the team looked young. Like, they were small. Well, they are retrievers, not Labradors. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> retrievers. Labrador, whatever. doesn't matter. They're what? The Chesapeake Bay retrie- re- Retriever? Yep. The state uh, oh, dog yes. of Maryland. <laughs> I learned that in trivia a couple weeks ago. <laughs> well, the best part is about UMBC is that so many people were Googling their website, their college website, that it crashed their system. Doesn't surprise they me. They tweeted out, we will be up and running soon. Thanks, everybody, for your attention and, you know, your awareness of us. And even better than, than the actual game was the guy in charge of uh, UMBC basketball Twitter. Yes. He, uh, he was on fire trolling everybody. They went from 5,000 followers to 45,000 followers in two hours. And he was having a blast with it. Like, who is this team? And then he would tweet out their college. Like, with their college uh-huh. synopsis. Like, everything about them. Their mission statement. And, uh, like, they actually call, like, in the, the, the day after they won, they're, like, they're interviewing uh, uh, the coach. And, like, do you, do you see what this guy, the guy who's in charge of your Twitter account, is doing? What he's saying? Uh, uh, do you want to be associated with that? Because some of the stuff he he's been kind of brutal to people. Yes. And he looked over and in an interview he said, "Hey, Bill, or whatever his guy's name was, yeah, keep it up." <laughs> <laughs> Odom, the coach of UMBC, gets paid two hundred and fifty thousand, I think, a year, and uh, they said they're working on a new contract for him right now. Uh, they said within our confines of payment, like what they can do for that college. He is so the son of Dave Odom. Yes, the yes. Um, it was it was fun to watch. My wife and I was were watching it, and we turned it off at sixteen to sixteen to watch something else. 
and it came and because my wife's like it doesn't matter you know the, the number one seeds always pull ahead in the second mm-hmm. half because they're deeper you know they you know start getting uh, used to it and uh so we're like okay whatever so we turn it back on and then we come back and there's like 10 minutes left and they're up by 13 i'm like well now we're watching this we gotta watch this a 21 to 21 halftime score and then a team that averages giving up like 50 points a game gave up 53 points in the second half you knew it was going to happen eventually. It had to, yeah. The, the, I mean, after 135 times, it finally happened. But you knew it was going to eventually happen that number 16 took down. I just wish it would have been Kentucky, so we could have always mocked Kentucky for being the first to lose. What gets me now is Kentucky is a five seed, is the highest ranked team in their divi- in their bracket. And they have a cakewalk, in theory, to that final four. Well, in theory, because... I, I'm, I'm, a, I have the Ramblers taking them down. I, you know what? I have no problem with anybody taking them down. I don't care at this point. Uh, the other question is, will Chris Mack, the head coach of uh, Xavier, go to Louisville? Why? That's from Doug. That's from number one fan, Doug. Uh, be, why? Because they'll offer him a ton of money. But from what I heard, uh, Xavier's already in talks of offering a new contract, which would be worth more than $3 million a year, listed. That doesn't include any of the private donations mm-hmm. and stuff that – that as a as a non public school that they they don't have to list and so they don't have to list Bill Murray as part of the deal. No, but uh, Luke Murray is uh, one of the favorites to get the head coaching job at Loyola Maryland. Damn it! So we might lose Bill. Yes, not not as good as Loyola Chicago. No, Loyola Maryland. So UC loses, Xavier loses, Ohio my college state loses. Ohio State loses. Mount Saint College of Mount Saint Joseph doesn't even make the tournament, and now you're losing Bill Murray. This sucks as a Cincinnati sports fan. I think what's even the biggest loss was the Ohio University Bobcats losing Xavier Simpson when he graduated. He transferred to Michigan. Oh, oh. Jeff, you're an Ohio Bobcat fan. I'm very sorry that your team did not make the tournament this year. Fan, <laughs> alumni, <laughs> alum. Yes. Okay. Uh. I'm very College sorry. sports, woo. <laughs> um, As evident by your two last week. Yeah. <laughs> your right. list of two. When I went to school there, admission to the sporting games mm-hmm. was free. Yeah. I attended one basketball game and zero football games my entire time there. Mm-hmm. And the only time I went to one basketball game was because it was Sibs weekend and my brother came up to visit, so I had to find something he might be interested in. What an asshole. That, that guy's a dick. He is. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's your NCAA wrap-up. Um, no one cares anymore because Xavier and UC is out. Actually, I don't really care. Oh, um, it killed my bracket. <laughs> it killed everyone's bracket. Everybody, Everyone had Xavier and UC playing well, in the Final Four? But everybody on Twitter was like, oh, Virginia just killed my bracket. Everyone's picking Virginia. You're fine. It's yeah. not like you picked, you know, an eight team to win it all. It's okay. No, I picked Xavier to beat UC in the Final Four. A lot of people so. did around here. <laughs> And well, I, I wouldn't have done that if I was in a bracket with people around here, but I was in a it was a national bracket mm-hmm. thing, and I'm like, nah, nobody else is from around here. So if for some strange reason that happens, I'll look smart. Okay, I think didn't the, happen. I think the second br- most brutal loss would have been Arizona's. Yes, um, yes, but they did it on purpose because Sean Miller didn't want to have to vacate any tournament wins this year. <laughs> <laughs> so you might as well lose. Oh now. yeah, does, does, allegedly. <laughs> And they like Buffalo. Everybody likes Buffalo. Well, see, that's the problem. You can't beat the Max school. You can't. In the first round. They never get any respect. No respect. Uh, Blake, how was your weekend? Uh, I'm still recovering. Better than Virginia. Tired. Okay. Did you go out of town? No. Did you drink? No. Did you spend a lot of money on Rockstar or whatever that was? No. Okay. Did you move? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Oh, you still, got... still in process, man. I got stuff all over the place. And are you still in your in-laws' house, though? No. Okay, so you're officially out. I'm out. So you're sleeping in your own home now. Sleeping in my own bed. Are your in my own home? Did your in-laws move in with you? No. Okay, just checking. Because no. that would have been kind of fun. Yeah. Do you have your own DVR now? No, not yet. Not uh, yet. I gotta set it up still, but I got Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm bound back in the 21st century <laughs> <laughs> internet technology. So now. <laughs> You can use a home phone and your internet at the same time now, so that's a positive. Yeah, so that's a great thing. Nice, you know, did, did you get the Kmart Blue Light special dial off at your in laws? Is that what it was, or no, AOL? It's old, old faithful Cincinnati Bell. Ah, oh, 
as Old Faithful. Yeah, service out of India. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, not anymore? No, they are. Oh, Anyways, yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever called them? <laughs> No, I, the girl's I'll, name is Tina, though. <laughs> yeah, it was a tumultuous weekend. We bought the we bought the house. We moved in. Uh, one of the girls went to Iceland to start training for. How was soccer. that? It was pretty cool. Tear shed. Yeah, of course. You know, but exciting. Pretty yeah. good. You know, pretty exciting adventure there. And I want to punch the sellers in the face because they hid some damages and all that kind of shit. Until you go through the final walkthrough and you realize when you move the heavy furniture and the heavy stuff, they're, like, covering shit up. Was there a load-bearing poster? If the Simpsons no. taught me anything, there's load-bearing posters yeah, check everywhere. Check posters. No, check no, posters. no load-bearing posters. Okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, you know. Did you knock any walls down and then realize that there was, like, a body behind it or anything? No, not yet. Okay. Bob and two wiring? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> <No>. always good. <laughs> did you find no. a pit of snakes? No. I always, that always freaks me out when you buy a house. They, yeah, you know, snakes living in those You know walls. what? You're right. You know, things are pretty good. See? Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> you know? I should be pretty happy. I don't have any of those problems. Okay. Is it built on a cemetery? Not that I know of. Okay. Now, if, See, I start, you're winning. if I start digging a pool in the backyard <laughs> <laughs> and all these coffins start climbing out, Indian burial ground. They did it! Move the, the bodies! bodies. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Actually, now that I think about it, I'm just not going to dig in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, if I don't dig, there's no problems, right? Uh, do you have a pri- like a privacy fence? Well, it's a fence. Yeah, it called your bathroom. What are you talking no, about? <laughs> no, in your backyard. Oh. Are you private? Or are you right next to neighbors? Yeah, there's a privacy privacy fence on the, my backyard because mm-hmm. the the back butts up against the. Um, School for the you know Ohio, Ohio Valley of Voices. The school, okay. The, the school for the uh, for the deaf children. Are you? Is the, the it's like the woods behind that school? Okay. So it's like this nice buffer, as if they weren't quiet already. Is it more than five hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Those kids are so loud. <laughs> Jesus, they don't even know it. <laughs> That was going to be my joke of are you five hundred yards away? But can, okay. can somebody please teach me to sign? Shut the hell up! <laughs> you sign, stay loud. off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a question on Twitter today. What did you do to go to hell? And Blake just did it. So there you go, dear diary. Blake's answer. Mocking the deaf. Four years of podcast, and that's the worst thing yeah. to sending me to hell? I'm sure there's more than this. Worsley's probably the worst, yes. <laughs> All right, well, if we're going there, I might as well say it. Um, there was a place near where I used to live where they built a uh, a uh, assisted, uh, an assisted living home for the uh, sightless and uh, people hard to see. And they had the biggest fucking spotlight right in front of, like, blinded everybody who drove by. And it's like, really? I don't think they need to see the sign. <laughs> Maybe they try to blind everybody to get them to join. Yeah. 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 We, ne- we can never tell if anybody's home because there's no lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you make fun of the Amish? <laughs> because they don't know. <laughs> They'll never know. Yeah, they don't listen. <laughs> Um, anyways, we're a history podcast. Uh, let's see. Not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, anything? Oh, Stephen Hawking died. Oh, yes. Well, we're pretty sure that your awful impersonation killed him. Because he, he, he was a Hobie listener. Uh, breath of Silence. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Two Breaths of Silence for Stephen Hawking. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. That was my breath. Uh... Well, okay. There, there, there's another spot for hell for Jason. Yeah. All right. I didn't read the article, but I saw the headline that said two weeks before Stephen Hawking died, he predicted the death of the universe. I did do that. Thank you. I'm going to shut up. You know what the best part yeah, is? That nobody, really, yeah. see, nobody sees it because we're not a video podcast. But I actually touch the the table with my fingers like I'm typing it. They can hear you typing the table. Can so. they hear me type? Yes. <laughs> Usually that's Blake that's hitting the table. So pretending, uh, pretending the end, of, predicting the end of the universe. I mean, it isn't pretty obvious it's going to happen at some point in time. I think he predicted when, maybe. No. Next Saturday. <laughs> sure. 
Well, I might guess, as well die now. Well, I guess Virginia has at least something to look forward to that's not as depressing <laughs> as their 16th season overall. Yeah, the, no Wait. one will win this year, so they, the tournament will be null and void. There you right, go. Hold on a second. Was it tied into the next uh, presidential election in 2020? Uh, you think we're going to get that far? <laughs> <laughs> Before we have an A, a dictator, or we just blow ourselves up. <laughs> I don't think Trump is even capable of uh, destroying the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Obama. No, there we go. <laughs> Obama set it up years of <laughs> advance. I always like, Obama did all this to the government. He's setting everything up to fail. Uh, he's jet skiing. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have his own Netflix yeah. show. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to be a talk show host next. Come on, bitches, let's go. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on. That would See be my an Pulitzer interesting Prize? show. <laughs> Obama's uh, talk yeah. show? Obama just having people come on his show. Mm-hmm. Kind yeah, of like was, a Between Two Ferns thing. I could see how that. that would be you good. Know, between Two Pulitzer Prizes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one Pulitzer Prize he got for just, just running for president. Hillary still would not I, be allowed on. Uh, oh. Is that the Pulitzer Prize Nobel. or the Nobel Peace Prize? Or Nobel, Prize. Yeah. sorry. Yeah, between two Nobels. Did you get a Pulitzer? I think for, he got a Grammy. Uh, for why for writing an autobiography I'm, before he accomplished anything. I'm sure they'll write. They'll give him a prize for something. I think he's got his own Hollywood star now, doesn't he? I don't know. <laughs> Now, now you know you made it if you've got that. I think Stephen Hawking actually has one, too. Mark Hamill does. Yes, yeah. yes, he does. That's Just for cool. sucking milk out of a seal's tit. See? Blue milk. Whatever. Blue milk. Out of an alien tit. Uh, unfortunately, it was not the alien tit from Total Recall. Uh, I did see three <laughs> billboards uh, for the blue outside. Ch- for the blue chick from uh, Job of the Hutt's den. She's green. She's oh, green. green, sorry. Mm. The dancer. Yes. I did see three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri last night. Missouri. What did they say? Uh, they said, you're going to hell. Uh, that's no. right. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, those are hell outside is real. Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, right. And it's only really two billboards. And it says, hell is real. <laughs> hell is real. We have two billboards outside Cincinnati. <laughs> and it says, hell is real. Uh, and something else. Oh, I the hell is real. Is that the same ones with the Ten Commandments on them? I yes. don't know. There's a lot of them. On the other side? Is that is what it, it is? Yeah. Okay. I know there's... Mm. Yeah, hell is real, and I know there's one that have the Ten Commandments broken down, and and I will say with three uh, billboards outside uh, Ebbing, Scab Jeff might have been right. Mm. I think I agreed with him on a movie. It was pretty damn good. So you're saying you have yeah. to watch La La Land now? No, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Uh, but it was very well done. Preston McNorman did a great job with it. Um, uh, Sam Rockwell, I keep forgetting. I know he won the Oscar for it, and I forgot he was in it, and he was amazing in it. So, uh, if you have not seen it, I would recommend it highly. So, maybe I'll watch that, because this weekend I watched... Uh, Ridiculous the, Six? No, The Magnificent Seven. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, did you... The West or the new one? Yeah, the new I one. I saw that a couple weeks... Uh, about two months ago. Yeah. What would you think? I was hoping for more. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. There was nothing wrong with it. It just... It was I there. Suppose, it was there. It felt kind of like they didn't really... They had all these characters that they didn't explore at all. I mean, it was... Maybe you got a little bit of uh, Denzel's background. Maybe a little bit at of... At the very uh, end. <laughs> yeah, at the very end. And a little bit of uh, uh, Ethan Hawke's background. None of the other characters you knew really anything about. Or their motivations or why they're there. Did you uh, think the uh, villain in it was very lackluster? Like, he was okay. Like, yeah. he did a good job. Peter Sars guy. Yeah, but there was no, like, real motivation. Like, he was in three scenes. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I I, I thought he had a. Uh, I thought his villain role in Green Lantern was more fleshed out. Wow. And then after I watched that, then I watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. Is that the uh, live action one? Yeah, Michael the, Bay's second the one. Second one, yeah. How was that for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie? It's pretty good. How was Rocksteady and Bebop? <sighs> well. I never liked Rocksteady or Bebop in anything they were in. Mm-hmm. They're stupid and annoying, and so they were perfectly stupid and annoying. Sheamus, the wrestler, yeah. WWE wrestler, was uh, Bebop? Uh, Rocksteady. Rock was Baxter in it? The Fly? Yes. Did he turn into... Did Tyler Perry no. turn into The Fly? He did not turn into The ah! Fly. He was, he was just a bad scientist helping uh, Shredder. Was he dressed as Medea? No. Oh. So he was somewhat tolerable. No, he's actually pretty okay. bad. He was actually pretty bad. Okay. Was <laughs> he, Kevin Nash in it as Super Shredder? No. Oh. 
That would have made it. No, but uh, oh yeah, but Tyler Perry's acting on that was was pretty bad. He was like. Uh, a bad actor trying to play an overly geeky person. Awesome. Like, worse than Urkel. Worse than Megan Fox trying to be cool? Well, Megan Fox is always cool. Mm-hmm. Did you see her toe thumbs? No, they, okay. they kept them off screen. Oh, I got toe thumbs. I would say Tyler Perry was I actually enjoyed his acting and, and his character in Gone Girl. Okay, I'll give you that. Oh, I'm not saying he's bad in everything, but he no. was just bad in that. He's bad in a lot of movies. I, I would rather see him in things that are not Medea movies. Well, you say that, but then you, did you see Alex Cross? Because that was not good. Him playing Alex Cross was you not good. You say that, but then did you see Boo 2? Boo! <laughs> that <laughs> was <laughs> bad. <laughs> not as good. Well, how can you top the original? The original Boo was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I thought his role in Get Out was pretty stereotypical. I don't think he was in Get Out, was he? Yeah, wasn't he the cop? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see Get Out. Oh, Ruined it! Spoiler! Spoiler alert! Uh, did they get out? No. no. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sequel, get in. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had a Twitter poll of the week. Find us on Bad Ideas Podcast. Or, yeah, Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. History of Bad Ideas on Facebook. And uh, We Be Geeks, 10 a.m. E- uh, Eastern, 9 a.m. Central every Friday. Uh, iTunes, Spotify... All of those guys, Google Play, iHeartRadio, uh, iHeartRadio until they go bankrupt. Uh, we're rooting for you. Bankrupt. Well, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, we're rooting for them to stay in. Uh, and then also, we're on Stitcher and uh, Tangent Bound Network. Check us out. Nerdly.co.uk for you British listeners. Today, mate. No one else. No? Dan- danger. Danger Entertainment. I was wondering if anybody else was doing a British thing. Anyways. Oh, you want uh, us to do the British thing? No, forget uh, it now. The moment's passed. Hello, Govna. Okay. What is your favorite 1980s television sitcom? You can go to Bad Ideas Podcast and vote every week on the Twitter poll of the week. We had Cheers. But you can only vote for four. Yeah, you only can put four up there, yes. <laughs> Cheers, Family Ties, New Heart, and Night Court. So, not, not even none of the above. Well, I might do a tournament. Here, <laughs> tell me if you heard this before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, when we finish the Disney tournament, we can start a new tournament. I still tournament. have all the winners in that, so it's getting there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we have Cheers, Family Ties, New Heart, and Night Court. This was neck and neck. It kept going back and forth for a while, and we had an official number. Uh, out of all four of them, winning 31% to 30, Night Court beat Cheers. Oh, Wow. Oh, anyone else? Blake, in the eighties, oh, I, like, I liked them both. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're both a little bit uh, dated and hard to watch now. I was going to say, on all these things listed, are any of these not dated? I think New Heart probably survives the best out of them. Yeah, I think New and Heart probably because I think that was the latest one to mm-hmm. that was in start. the that was in yeah. the Bed and Breakfast Hotel. Yeah, uh, up in Vermont for people that aren't familiar with it. With Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. Yes, and uh, the Stephanie was the daughter. Stephanie. Uh, no, she was no. The daughter. She was the daughter. She was the the maid. The maid. Oh, that's right. Who was the daughter? There wasn't a daughter. Stephanie was played by Julia Duffy. Yeah. Uh, I thought Stephanie was the daughter. That is right. She. No, they, they didn't. They didn't have any children. And her anymore. husband okay. was what? Peter Peter Scolari. Yeah, boyfriend, yes. and then eventually they got married. Uh, so and then family ties. Oh, I'm sorry. New York was 22 percent, and family ties was 17 percent. Hmm. You see, Night Court, Marky Post. Mmm, Marky Post. Yeah. Selma Diamond. Mmm, <laughs> Selma Diamond. <laughs> yeah. Bull. Mm, yeah. Richard. Maul. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say Carnes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> John Larquette was funny in it. Yes, he was. Yeah, John Larquette was the best part of it. Blake, what was your favorite back then? Uh, okay. It would have to be a throw between Cheers and Night Court. Uh, it, it exactly matches my 31-30. Okay. I was not a fan of Night Court, but I did like Cheers and New Heart a lot. Family Ties was okay. New Heart was okay. No, I, liked, I, I watched I liked, all of them. So I watched all, and Cheers was by far my favorite. Yeah, I, I always liked Alex P. Keaton. Yeah. Family, che- family Ties. we've been together but for a million years. The whole thing about New Heart, I did like, this was his second sitcom. Mm-hmm. In the 80s, we'll it was the second. Yes. And isn't that the one that has the finale years. where he wakes up? Yes. And he's back in the first one. And he's yes. back in his uh-huh. first sitcom that was pre New Heart. And the it was like thi- the whole was, New Heart was a it was a dream. dream. Yeah, that was the Bob Newhart show. The was Bob Newhart show. Yeah. Spoilers thirty five years later. Be careful, Blake. Be careful. And then, Sorry. And then, well he, yeah. he did the Bob Newhart show. And then he went on to do Newhart. 
And then after that left, he went on and did Bob, Bob. <laughs> as a comic book artist. But that one didn't last but a season. Nah, that was a couple of seasons. Two seasons, yeah. maybe. Mm. Yeah. Because they tried to force you to yeah, watch Yeah, like it. the Watchdog or I forget what his superhero was. I forget what it was. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't... I'm sure if I watched it now, it would be bad, but... Uh, no, question, though. I was thinking about this the other day. So, Cheers, Family Ties, New Heart, Night Court. Uh, most of them, if not all of them, were filmed in front of a studio audience, live studio audience. Okay. Do sitcoms do that anymore? Some do. Uh, Big Bang Theory Ooh. does. Does do they? Okay. I was just wondering because The Office obviously did, and a lot a- of any the, of the mm-hmm. multi camera, uh, uh, any of the ones where they talk straight to the camera. Yeah. those aren't the multi cameras are probably in front of the studio audience. The single camera, yeah, the single okay. camera, yeah. Okay, I was just wondering because you don't see that because at the beginning of every Cheers episode. Mm-hmm. Film before a live studio audience. Yeah. So yeah. I was just wondering. Now yeah, they don't actually say it like they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, <laughs> like happy days, like, because anytime Fonzie walked on, hey! Well, they did that with Kramer and Seinfeld yeah. in the third season, I think, mm-hmm. and they basically came out before the audience, you know, before yeah. the show started, the recordings, and they said, don't do that. Yeah, We're don't, not clapping. Yeah, don't cheer when Kramer okay. comes on screen. Yeah. You're the ruining our timing, because we have to wait and wait and wait for you to finish clapping before you can deliver lines. And he's still the worst character of all yeah, four. Yeah, Kramer was not... Yes. Uh, he's tolerable the, the more I watch it, and yeah. I like him in parts. There are parts I liked when he had his intern. That was... That was intern. One. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one day we'll get that rooster. <laughs> or but chicken. the best episode was the uh, Chinese restaurant episode. And Kramer wasn't in it. Yes. You know, in the second... Donna Chang? No, 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 no. That was later. <laughs> there was a uh, second or third season where George was not in it, and he went to the writers and said, if you don't, if you ever fucking do this again, I will walk. So did we read the same article this week? We might have! <laughs> The that was kind of mystical. interesting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was kind of interesting about that. He said, if you're going to write another uh, episode without me in it, then you can make them all that way. Yes. And they never did again. <laughs> they do work better at all four. Yeah. Um, well, you got to have something to do, even if you're not the main storyline. you got to be there. Was Sports Night filmed in front of a live studio audience? No. They had a laugh track in the they first season. They added a laugh track. Which was horrible. And, oh, so much better when they got rid of the laugh track. Yes. And the worst is, like, towards the end of the first season, there was, like, a little bit of a laugh track, like, once every ten minutes. And you're like, (laughs) what the fuck was that? (laughs) It's like, why don't we just cancel it? Is Game of Thrones filmed in front of a live studio audience? Yes. Okay. Uh, Only 8,700 audience members have died, so it's okay. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Family Guy is, too, just to let you know. Uh, (laughs) Blake, let's do some listener feedback. Now it's time for our bomb listener feedback. Who's our sponsor this week? Brought to you by Gone Lawyer Legal Law Practice. Gone Gag Order Nullifying Experts. Specifically for you ladies whose gags have been keeping you from making money. What do we got? Sleeping with billionaires, millionaires, or soon to be leaders of the free world. The free world. <laughs> Are we really that free? Why anymore? let gag? Well, why let your gag <laughs> hold you back from making more money? Powerbomb, you like your gag, don't you? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Move on. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the problem is when you have a gag order, you got to sign it to make it valid. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on down the hall. Okay. <laughs> what do we got this week? Yeah. He sounds like he's uh, worked for the uh, gone lawyer legal law practice. He has. Good job, Jeff. Uh, we start off with our first question from Doug. Number one fan. Hey, Pams. Formerly known as? Can't give yourself a nickname. He says, uh, why does Jim look like Jimmy Riggins? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, wait, sorry. Why did Alfred E. Newman go from looking like Jim to looking like Rick Astley? Never going to give you up. Never going to um, let you down. Simple reason. Because he could. What? Wouldn't huh? you? No! If I was Rick Astley, I've seen Rick Astley lately. I would go to Jim. <coughs> and that's you. a tough call. Sorry, Jim. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, Jim, yeah, yeah. Rick Astley's adorable. In 1989? Well, that's what he looks like in 1989, Rick Astley. For every millennial that's listening to us, they're going, what the fuck is Alfred E. Newman and what the fuck is Rick Astley? They know Rick Astley because they've been Rick Roll. Never be going, give you up. Let me worry. 
Is Mad Magazine relevant anymore? It yeah. doesn't exist, does it? Yes. Yes, it does. Oh. Yes, it does. It's, it's a satire magazine. What? For the lowest common denominator. It used to be funny, like for teenagers and that. And I enjoyed it. I always was a Cracked fan more so, though. Oh, man, it was better than Cracked. No. Yeah. But Albert E. Newman goes from, a from yeah, an odd shape to, like, a to suit and everything else. They don't know if it's an April Fool's joke either, though, because it does come out on April uh, 1st. So there you go. The joke is it won't come out. Ah! Ah! But he's in a business suit, and he does. He kind of looks like he should be on Riverdale, to be honest with you. And so. that's not a good thing. Yes, it is. So, Blake, did you used to read Mad Magazine? All the time. Okay. Uh, do you think I mean, there's a place for it now? In you memes. Think cares? In memes. It should be just a meme. <laughs> meme magazine? Meme magazine. Cracked, cracked magazine went to online. When well, you've, everybody's done Mad Libs, right? I don't think it's the same thing. No. No, no, no. 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 Oh, darn. <laughs> Mad also had the back page where you pulled, uh, you folded it, pulled it, folded it in half. The picture together and made a better cool. picture. It yeah. always started with Spy vs. Spy. Oh, Spy vs. Spy was great. Mm-hmm. Great well, Commodore 64 game. I always liked their uh, their movie parodies they did. Movie parodies mm-hmm. are always pretty funny. Their was, political stuff was never that great. Who was it, Al Jaffe? Oh, maybe I didn't even yeah, get Al Jaffe. political stuff mm-hmm. because, yeah, when I was a kid I didn't care about the politics going on. Do you care now? Not really. Okay, there you go. When I start caring, it just makes me angry, so I stop caring. That's, your, care, that's caring. your secret uh, power. You're always angry. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, hopefully they go back to looking like Jim next month. Jim, I'm with you. Thank I, you. I stand united with go you. Go back to looking like uh, a perverty howdy doody? Yes, yes, yes. Right. But still sexy. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> you know what that sigh means. Big Dev the Psy Guy. Dev, Dev, Dev. Yes, Dev, coming from Ohio's hat, said, uh, why didn't Disney get Hayden Christensen to force Ghosted Up in The Last Jedi as well? Hashtag everybody loves Annie. Because they're waiting for the next movie to do that. Too expensive. Their budget was already maxed out, and they couldn't spend that $1.99 to get Hayden Christensen's uh, image. He was too busy filming Jumper 2. Uh, so he couldn't be there. So that was the big thing. <laughs> Remember when Hayden Christensen was supposed to be the next big thing? No. No, me neither. No, no, no. no. Scott Speedman's on dialed uh, speed dial number seven over there. <laughs> hey, guys, what about me? We should try reaching out to Scott Speedman and getting him on our show. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. I don't think he's got anything else going on. No, 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 no. Uh, did you see Macaulay Culkin challenge Rusev at WrestleMania? Rusev wanted is upset because he's one of the most over wrestlers, and one of the most what over wrestlers like fans love him. Oh, it means okay. being over. And I thought you meant we're over him. No, no, no. <laughs> and he has no plan. They have no plans for him for WrestleMania. So he tweeted out, "Hey, anybody want any celebrity want to wrestle me?" Macaulay Culkin called him out. All right, I would pay to see that. Unlike the Undertaker, who wouldn't call out. Uh, oh my John God. Cena wouldn't give Cena an answer. Can we please stop this? Stop it. I was confused, though, because yes. I watched a little bit of Monday mm-hmm. Night Raw. Delete. Kane came out. Yes. And choke slammed him. Mm-hmm. When did Kane get hair again? Uh, the wig department showed up. Uh, it was it was pretty good. Uh, I'm just, I'm upset with Kane because he's obviously not going to get John Cena's vote for that, for the, his next election. <laughs> you choke slam somebody, you're not getting their vote. And he's probably not going to get the John Cena fans' votes. Mm, they're kind of fickle. And I think they're not under, they're not voting age, so they're okay. Oh, good point. <laughs> Nobody in Tennessee is rooting for uh, John Cena. No, no, no. Nobody in Tennessee is really voting either, so it's okay. <laughs> Apparently, they are voting because they're not. They don't let uh, people from out of state buy beer on those days. <laughs> That's true. Indiana's getting there. They're going to let people buy beer on Sunday. Oh boy! But you still can't get it cold at the grocery store. Yeah, it's got to be warm, isn't it? <laughs> we just voted that down. You can't get you can't buy beer on uh, Election Day in Tennessee. Yeah, we went down there to Tennessee one de- time for the weekend. We got down there, went to the grocery yes. store, loaded up our uh, cart with beer. Yes, and I remember that. But the, the, yeah. the ballot issue was to allow drinking uh, on the... They were voting 
to repeal that law. Oh, were they? I, yeah, I think it you, failed. <laughs> exactly we didn't law. get to buy beer that day on election day. Well, no, there was that day they couldn't, but yes. that was that was actually on the ballot for that year. The thing was that, to repeal that law. I think the thing that confused me was it was on a Thursday. And what Who really has elections on Thursdays? Really, They're always Tuesdays. What really sucked was it was a like, four day election day, so we didn't buy beer all weekend. <laughs> we were screwed. Well, it was on Thursday because they do things slower in the South. <laughs> <laughs> they were still using the paper ballots from their house. Uh, I trust those more than the electronic ones. Uh, down the hall. <laughs> Except for those hanging chads. <laughs> if you're going to punch a chad, you better make sure it goes all the way through. Fucking chad. God. I hate that guy. What did chad ever do to you? He just hangs around, doesn't do anything. Make a decision, chad. Mmm. What is this, Blake? This mm. is time for Blake's doorbell music. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's time for... Fortunately, his neighbors can't hear it. Nick mm. Albright. Mm. He says, Jeffer shot... Ooh. Are you reading the same thing I'm reading? Oh, this is next week's. He switched a new one and here. I, there we go. There you go. There you go. No, keep going. It's right there. It's right there. All right. Hold on. Should we start over? Here we go. Are you ready? Should, should, no, seriously. Okay. Cue the music. Blah, blah, blah. Nick Albright. <laughs> hey, everybody breathe. <laughs> Jason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These last two weeks, mm-hmm. it becomes apparent that Jeff mm-hmm. and Blake together cannot exist peacefully in the same universe. We took 220 episodes. One must die. Ooh. Who mm-hmm. do you? Yeah. BTK. Fine, torture kill. Oh, okay. I was wondering. <laughs> Why them? How do you kill? And how do we know you choose Jeff? Hey, wait a minute. He won't choose me. Well, just physically and health-wise, I feel like Blake's going to last longer than Jeff. And, you know, we need the podcast to keep going, so I'm going to say I'm killing Jeff. Oh man. Because <laughs> Blake's going to last longer. But Blake might get bored with it quicker. So that's a tough call. We're not screwed here. Of course, he's pot committees four years. Well, he asked, how would you kill me then? But Jeff shows up to the expo. Yeah. But I do have hula hoop. <laughs> I have mad hula hoop skills. And he brought, introdu- Blake did introduce me to Remy LaCroix. That's right. Well, yeah, this is an obvious choice. I killed Jim. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I killed Jim by drawing and quartering him. Wow. It's You're nothing evil. against Jim. Damn. I really like Jim. I've known him for 12 or 20 years almost. <laughs> But I've never seen a man get drawn and quartered, and damn it, I want to see a man get drawn and quartered in my life. I sure hope you can't find any horses. <laughs> oh no, they're miniature horses. Oh, it's going to be ponies. It, it's going it's to be gonna take yeah. a while. And, and if it is a, a, a zombie apocalypse end of the world, at least he won't be able to chase you down. That's true. <laughs> after being drawn and quartered, I feel like with the little pony, the little horses, the miniature horses, it's just going to feel like a really good massage, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Oh, I, that's the one I'm doing. I'm drawing. Oh, drawing my shoulder court. feels better now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, can you let me go? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't take me down off this rack. My back feels great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm drawing, quartering Jim with Shetland ponies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know what to do after uh. that. <laughs> So does does the world uh, universe uh, uh, fold in on itself because it didn't kill Jeff or Blake? Probably. Yeah. See, I don't think it does because Nick is the one that, that came up with these scenarios. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden it's evident we can't get along. Whereas yes. We only didn't get along because Nick started this. I don't know. I've seen you and Blake talk politics off air. I don't think you guys do get along with that stuff. Uh, or lost. Obviously the right answer <laughs> is to kill Nick. 
Oh, so that we don't have to deal with these questions. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> what's uh, wait, what's that? What's that evil little clown that makes people kill each other? Nick the Gimp, Jigsaw, no. Jigsaw. Is Nick Jigsaw? <laughs> he might be Jigsaw. <laughs> He's actually been laying under our table for the last twelve <laughs> episodes. You thought I just killed a man and buried him here? So is that I hit him in wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Nick's new nickname, Jigsaw. <laughs> okay, I like it. Jigsaw it is. See, Nick, we gave you a nickname. We can do that. You can't give yourself a nickname, but we gave you one. Yes. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Now, do I have the next correct one from Chad Rose? Yes, you're fine then. Thank you. <laughs> Don't punch him. All right, <laughs> I like Chad. this, Chad. So we're going Chad. back and editing all that stuff out? No. Is it? No. <laughs> What's editing? <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> You guys aren't going to put that in, right? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> what else we got from Chad Rose? From uh, Hanging Chad Rose. <laughs> he says, when voting... Oh, no, hold on. <laughs> when drinking a craft beer, what are you looking for? For it not to taste like grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for good taste, which usually means not incredibly hoppy. Okay. I agree. Um, Fuck IPAs. I'm more of a wheat <laughs> fan. I like the wheat ale. I love wheats. Wheats are good. Wheats, yeah. wheats are probably my fave. Sasson. Mm-hmm. Sassons are good. Lager. Lagers. Pilsners. I don't like the dark beers. And in the summer, I'll do shandies. Shand- so you you say what she's dark saying. beer. I think you don't like thick beer. That might be it. Yeah. That's a, unfor- uh, surprisingly, I, I, I like my men. Like uh, Unlike I like my beer, I like <laughs> thick men, so it's okay. Dark thick men? No, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry stout thick men? We're supposed to get four inches of snow tomorrow. I'm hoping to get eight inches. Mm. That's not on. dark. Mm. I guess not. <laughs> snow is white. Pure white. <laughs> <laughs> That's down the hall to KKK oh, podcast. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Uh, yes, so thanks, Chad, for doing the yes. social commentary. <laughs> Don't let her answers, you know, dissuade you from asking future questions. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so hanging Chad Rose, so we got two nicknames already, yeah. so you get a nickname, you, you get, get a nickname. nickname. Yeah. Can we give Des Hassing a nickname? He's the most educated listener. <laughs> he gets a nickname! <laughs> he's like Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School. That's right. <laughs> That's also when he's going to be done with school when he's 80. But right. bump. Ah. Let's see what what's Des Hassan got. Des, most educated listener mm-hmm. from the left coast, says, "Why are all the shows on Amazon Prime super depressing? Is it a conspiracy to compel us to buy consumer goods like more Amazon Prime? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should I break out my tinfoil hat to watch hashtag Tin Star? Um, you should always break out your tinfoil hat because those are Q." But uh, I think they make super depressing shows because super depressing is what wins awards. And Amazon wants to win awards. They do. They do. Uh, I was going to say, no, they have the Joel McHale show. That's Netflix. Yeah, that's Netflix. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then and got... I'm sorry, the Joel mm-hmm. McHale show is super depressing because you watch clips of these things that are still being aired on television. Talk and you're like, bitch. Why? Yeah, but, but at least he makes fun of it. Yeah, I know, yeah. but then you, know, you like have the to deservedly wa- so. But you have to watch the clips from these terrible shows. Half the times they feature the name that should never be uttered. Oh uh, my gosh, the, the name of the family that should never be uttered. Yes, adorable, yeah. adorable, or whatever her name. No, is? not Do- no. Donna adorable. Oh, Donna adorable. Don adorable. Don. Oh. Donna adorable. Whatever. <laughs> uh, there is a show that he always highlights on his show, Joel McHale. And it's something about that they're musicians, or in quotations or something, or they're musicians' wives. What the fuck channels are these on? Bravo. Is that what it is? <laughs> uh, ETV. Okay. The things I don't watch. So I don't have those channels, thank God. We, <laughs> Women's Entertainment Network. Like, uh-huh. like he had to think about like Vanderpump Rules. He had the girl on from that who was re- releasing a new album where she wanted to spread her legs and, I, sh- <laughs> and shine. And then <laughs> what they didn't show on that show is the producer was kind of like, um... Do you mean your wings? She's like, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is our world, people. This is our world. Well, maybe she had a date with Weinstein that night. <laughs> Who knows? Aww. Oh. Uh, can we? Uh... Yeah, Des, don't let our answers dissuade you from asking future <laughs> questions. <laughs> what is the Vanderpump Rules? What is that show? 
It's uh, what? Do, what are in theory are they famous for? Vanderpump was that a movie? No, Lisa Vanderpump, Van <laughs> <Bane> Wilder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm thinking of Cider House Rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's less depressing than watching the Vanderpump. <laughs> Vanderpump Rules. Uh, give me abortions all day long, not those Vanderpumps. <laughs> we should abort the Vanderpump. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Lisa Vanderpump is uh, I got back. from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, of course it's a fucking Real Housewives. <laughs> and she uh, has two uh, restaurants, uh, oh. pump, uh, pump and Sir. Uh, <laughs> That they have like all the people that work there are want to be models and actors and of actresses, course. and so they're waiting tables and bartending. And it's <laughs> Jim, are you still waiting for your big break in Cincinnati? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they all get drunk, sleep with each other, and fight at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> yeah, or within five minutes of each other. <laughs> so if you wait, hold on. There's so sort of like a bartender slash actor, waitress slash actor. Cook slash actor. Not really. They don't really deal with the co- the, the kitchen. Model stand. slash actor slash. slash <laughs> yeah. Model they're slash the ones actually are making the good yeah. food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While you got these assholes outside waitering t- tables. They uh. are some of the worst people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> there were like zero redeeming qualities from these people, but they're on television. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. <laughs> I'm not. I'm a little, <laughs> little disappointed now that I know more about it. I seriously have no idea what these fuckers did, and I kept seeing Joel McHara talk about them. I'm like, what is this show? What channel is it on? It's on, I think I'm guessing Bravo. It's on Bravo. It's spun okay. off of Ugh. The Housewives. So I was working from home last Bravo, week. Bravo, which was the home of the Arts and Entertainment Network, or what it used to be. That was A&E. That was oh, A&E. Yeah, A&E. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, they still Arts. exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they have tow tra- lizard towing and all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> <I> like towing. <laughs> you know, for, forget about this highbrow art and music. Let's just go to Vanderpump shit. <laughs> Well, I was watching, I was working from home, and I have the TV on when I work from home just for noise, and I didn't realize it, but I ended up going through two episodes of the brand new 16 and Pregnant uh, on MTV, Uh. and then it went into Young and Pregnant, Uh, they were like 21. You you don't have like any good cable stations, and you have MTV. Well, hold on, he's uh, Amazon Prime. No, I have cable. I have this some is depressing. People. Oh no. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and let me tell you, I used to like sixteen and pregnant. Not so much anymore. It's oh. kind of depressing. So what do you think of Farrah Abraham? Oh, she's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. I mean, she is worse than anybody on Vanderpump. <laughs> <laughs> so because Farrah Abraham Vanderpumps, and then the family we shall not name. I think some, a couple people on Vanderpump are better than the uh, family we should not name. Okay. But Farrah Abraham. Is the bottom feeder. At least they work on Vanderpump at a restaurant. Well, half the time they show up late well, <laughs> and hungover <laughs> or still drunk. It's like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's your Des. I hope you appreciate our Vanderpump uh, synopsis there for he you. He has on Prime <laughs> and he got <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> So next week, ask about Bravo, and we'll talk Amazon. We'll no, talk Longmire. No, <laughs> Is that Netflix? That's Netflix. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Which is good. Uh, the last season came Man. out a couple months ago. Longmire's good. Yeah. Man in High Castle. I think we'll be talking about that we'll later. T- <laughs> now we'll get to a uh, Amazon Prime show. Is that, oh, is that the Man in the Canoe? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they make Stomp or that one musical thing for like $100 million that failed? Amazon did. Sure. It wasn't Stomp. It was something. Some musical. It was like Clash. That. Sure. Smash, boo. I don't know. What's that one musical that's on NBC now? Rise? Oh, my God. Did you see previews for Ted that? Ted Mosby's in it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's all it's always previews for. Yeah, it. that's enough of that. Oh, my God. Oh, could be good. All right. So if you think we've hit a new low <laughs> in listener feedback, huh. we are given an opportunity to redeem ourselves, raise our IQs, and sound somewhat verschrunken. We'll fail. I did tell the the nerdy bitches that we are going to really go deep into this, and I feel like we're going to disappoint really easily. (laughs) Uh, I don't know, based on the last three questions. (sighs) Anyways, moving on. That's what we do. We leave them disappointed. And wanting more. (laughs) These are going to be so much more. I have to listen next week. Nerdy Bitches from Nerdy Bitches Podcast? Yes. Says, uh, Kenny, 
a cat. Sean Bean, Forrest Whitaker, generic sorority girl, and red shirt guy are all in a bunker at the end of the world. Are they Schrodinger's people? Are they dead or alive? Or are they both dead and alive? Discuss the quantum superposition. Before we discuss it, this is one of my favorite questions somebody's ever asked on this. <laughs> I, really didn't, question. I really didn't get it at first because I was like, Kenny, Sean Bean, did Forrest Whitaker die a lot? Generic short girl and red shirt guy. I'm like, what? Red shirt freshman? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but not, not the this doesn't make term sense. Red shirt, the Star Trek term red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does a cat are... die often? Schrodinger's cat. Oh, the, the whole basis of the whole question. <laughs> yes. Okay, now I got it. Sorry. <laughs> they have nine lives, Jason. No, they don't. <laughs> I saw Halle Berry. <laughs> she is not. You don't. You don't need nine lives when you're alive, but yet dead at the same time. Ooh. So, Ooh. what's your answer? Are they all dead or alive? Oh, they're all alive. Are they both? Dead and alive. They're all alive, and but if you open that door mm-hmm. and they're dead, you killed them. Okay, Correct. so they're fine as long is as they're contained. A, well, the the bunker is keeping them alive. Yes. Oh. Okay. But but I like t- that. but no, but, when the, but the world ends and someone opens the door, that's when they die. Oh, uh, they're they're alive when we put them in there. If if you open it, oh. they're dead. You're the one who killed them. <laughs> so I, hold on, hold on. I disagree with your way of thinking. Well, hold on. Then you're wrong. <laughs> Are they listening to History of Bad Ideas podcast? Oh, that makes good. <laughs> uh, so they didn't even make it through listener feedback. <laughs> Neither do we. Six hours later, we're only fifty-five minutes in. Oh dear God. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you this. So, Kenny, a cat, Sean Bean, Forrest Whitaker, generic, generic sorority girl. Sorority girl? You know, the first person to always die in horror movies. <laughs> yeah, and red shirt guy. Who dies Star first Trek. out of all of them? Let's do it in order. Who dies first? Star Trek guy. Oh, gen- gener- red shirt guy. Sor- generic sorority girl dies first. No. Because she's having sex and gets killed. Yes. Well, if it's a horror movie, though, the black guy has to die first. He's not in here. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. Oh, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> you know, Sean Bean lasts until the end. Sean Bean will last, and he'll right. die in some epic, fantastic way, probably saving Correct. whoever's whoever's left. The cat. The cat. Okay. <laughs> saving the cat. And okay. Ken, Ken, Kenny's dead before that, usually. But uh, no, yeah. Kenny's usually survived through about three quarters of the whole episode. It, it depends. Is he I'll trying say, yeah. to put up uh, Christmas lights <laughs> around a uh, electric outlet socket? Yeah. The full of a uh, boat <laughs> hanging true. over Shark, Shark Tank. Tank. <laughs> the one episode where he, the first episode he lived. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going uh, sorority girl. Uh, Forrest, uh, Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker, sorority girl. Uh, sorority girl and red shirt guy will be killed at the same time. Mm. No, I think Sean Bean, yeah. a red shirt guy, uh, uh, fetch a plan for them to survive and get out. And red shirt guy dies just like with a, gets shot with an arrow or something. I don't know. Arrow! Message for you! And then Sean That's Bean, like, a meteor falls on him, and as he's crawling off of that, then an ATV runs over him or something. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of arrow going through somebody, did everybody see the thing on our uh, Facebook page, History of Bad Ideas, uh, that the Monty Python recut as a drama? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was well done. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> Uh, so I hope we answered your question, Nerdy Bitches. Uh, you can check them out at Nerdy Bitches Podcast. Uh, they're a fun little show. Uh, not little, actually. They're a pretty good-sized podcast there. So uh, With huge tracts of land. Stop it. Uh, no, we like Nerdy Bitches, so we appreciate that. Uh, we would like more intelligent questions like that from them. <laughs> not anyone else. Just from them, we want intelligent <laughs> questions. And we'll screw those up. Yes. Uh, Blake, wrap us up on listener feedback. Oh, we always wrap up with professor number one. Suck it. Doctor number one. Yes. If DC wanted to ride Black Panther's coattail, Mm. do they have a decent African-American superhero other than Cyborg? Black Black Lightning. Lightning. (laughs) (laughs) Jinx. (laughs) Uh, You can find my reviews on Uh, nerdly.co.uk. Yes, uh, Black Lightning is a great show. I really am loving it. Yeah, but does it for match, a movie? Yeah, d- will it match Black Panther? Well, <sighs> why ride on the coattails? Why not go in a new new direction and do like maybe a Native American and have Apache chief, <laughs> a neck choke? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
right. Never <laughs> should Apache Chief be seen again. What Unless about, you're in Family Guy. What about the Samurai? No! No! Oh my god, Samurai might be the most offensive <laughs> character ever. Dear God. Do, do they have an Eskimo uh, superhero? Yeah. Do they have an Anuk? Anuk. <laughs> My God! <laughs> Every time Apache yeah. Chief says a duck Chuck," Anuk he Chuck. shows up. Uh, I no. didn't say Nanook. I said a Nook Chuck. <laughs> Nanook. Uh, samurai looked like Genghis Khan, and it was the most horrible thing ever. But he could turn invisible. And what or made into it, the wind? And what made it worse is they made a superpowers action figure out of him. No, stop it! Of course they did. They made one out of everybody from not the, Apache uh, Chief. They didn't never no, no, Apache, Apache Chief. Chief. I was very upset by that. Very upset by that. Why? You didn't want to see him ever again. Why are you upset? Well, that's true. <laughs> I did it. You know, it's almost kind of like the opposite of Hulk. When Apache Chief got bigger, his loincloth got big, too. <laughs> his clothes grew with him. Because they're, they're made from, like, And how come Hulk, Hulk's skin? pants never came off, either, when he got big? Because the there was a Hulk. comic book code? <laughs> Because it was it was actually steroidal, and those just shrank. Oh, <laughs> I see. That's how it works. <laughs> I have raisins for balls. <laughs> and Jason's not kidding when he said that. Oh, my wife has mine. <laughs> They're in her purse. She puts them on top of the, the rearview mirror sometimes. I like to jiggle them. Those aren't dice. <laughs> <laughs> we did spray paint them. Surgery. I'd like to take his his face off. Yes. Face off, Jeff. What is face off? Face off is when uh, someone gives us two or more factions to pit head to head or head to head to head, depending, mm-hmm. uh, and we decide who would come out on top. Yes. Never, never, Jim. He's the power bottom. No, always bottom. Always bottom. So what do we got from Dev? Dev wants to say, uh, we want to pit Episode 2, Anakin Skywalker, versus Episode 5, Luke Skywalker, in Face Off. Okay. Is this a trick question? No. I, I don't think so. It's Which one is whinier, too? No, honestly, mm-hmm. Episode 4, Luke Skywalker, is much whinier. Oh, That's four, true. Episode 4 is the whiniest uh, Luke. But... And, and probably episode one is the whiniest Anakin, to be honest with you. No, I think episode I think episode two is. Oh. Uh, three, he's pretty whiny in two. I don't like sand. But anyway, are, are we are we are we are they in a whiny battle or lightsaber about... battle? Lightsaber. Um, I, I imagine it's they're they're both starting their uh, training. Training. Yeah, this is where they both of them kind of start. Ep- episode two, Anakin will beat episode five, Luke. I agree. Anakin's had more training in, even in that time period than Luke did. Um, Luke had yeah. the Green Lantern school of training. I'm here for twenty minutes. I'm master now. Time to go. And it was episode uh, two, Anakin also, you know, decided to slaughter an entire race of people. It's true. And Luke Skywalker could barely even. Handle, uh, you know, one person, Darth Vader. Yeah, he, he didn't even have a montage. He didn't. You mean handle no. uh, Anakin Skywalker himself? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and Anakin Skywalker, who isn't as powerful as he was then, because he needs machines to live. So th- he's probably more strong in the Force at that time. Yeah, by the end, Darth Vader needed a walker to get up the steps in Episode Six. I really don't think he was—he was like going around the local grocery store uh, shopping with a little scooter. Yeah, he had the cart mart. Going yeah, he had a little beep. <laughs> no, beep, no, he, beep. He wasn't fat or trashy enough to ride around in a mart cart. Then you <gasps> hand me the Uncle Ben's <gasps> rice. <gasps> I like it over my. <gasps> Coconut milk. I, I don't think Darth Vader would eat Uncle Ben's. Mm, he might. Uh, he hates Ben Kenobi. I oh, that's true. That eats. is true. I never thought of that. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yes, I did. He's more <laughs> minute rice. <laughs> rice a roni, the San Francisco treat. You know what I'm kind of disappointed in with all the technology and the droids and the robots mm-hmm. and stuff? You know, how come through the Death Star they didn't have, like, you know, like those uh, big... Uh, 
you know, motorized scooters that they drive old people through the airports in. <laughs> or <laughs> like, beep, beep, Emperor coming through, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> or it would have been the Star Trek thing where in the guy's head, what it was that it was, you know, the whole thing was a box that he was r- yeah. riding in, the original. <laughs> or just the chairs from Wally. Yeah. yeah. That could work too. Yeah. I don't know if I'm depressed that there's no segues in this. <laughs> <laughs> they said on Good Morning America 20 years ago they were taking over. <laughs> yeah. There's segues in Cloud City. Why do you want to look this film? Go back and add some segues. <laughs> 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 the guys with the, you know, the, 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 the rap rock. Yeah, the on the back of the segway. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put Paul Blart in the background too? Yeah. I can't wait to the re-release. The re-release. <laughs> <laughs> what did you change, George? I just put segways in. <laughs> I, I, characters on segways. I saw a twenty-year-old video on Good Morning America. They said they're the future. I was, uh, uh, I was listening to a podcast that Annalise recommended to me. <laughs> 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 and they said, why aren't there segways on, on Cloud City? That's a good idea. Make it happen. <laughs> and then Annalise apologized. Uh, did you see Steven, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg did uh, state that he does apologize for putting walkie-talkies in instead of guns, leaving the guns in E.T.? Well, he realized he, it was a bad idea. He said he will never retouch up a, a classic. After, like, after he made me watch that stupid movie. You did have to preview that. I did. I wasn't there, thank God. Uh if there's no guns, and what's going to go? Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> pew, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. You know, you see, I, I don't think I've seen E.T. for decades. You don't miss and much. And I probably, it's on purpose, if, if you If you liked it, keep like, yeah. keep the liking of it in your memory, because... Yeah. I mean, I'll buy watch. Reese's Pieces. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Reese's Pieces are good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rumpf, rumpf, rumpf. rumpf. Did I get a rumpf out of that guy? Yeah. Rumpf. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, ooh, piece of candy. Simmer down, James Woods. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> My wife uh, asked me, she's like, should we show E.T. to, like, my oldest son? No. No, not at all. No. You can get really threatening with that uh, walkie-talkie. I I think you can find it without the walkie-talkies. It's It's still a horrible show. Oh, it's not good. I mean, mean, did did I at least get rid of that threatening, long, extended digit glowing tip? No, but in the re-release, they showed Drew Barrymore uh, as a five-year-old doing coke, so that was kind of good. <laughs> okay. All right. yeah. and, and whoring herself out. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, the, the Down problem. the hall in Rory Moore's uh, sex court. <laughs> problem when I it's preview. Not, it's not taping right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> when I did preview that movie, there actually was a, uh, a bad developed part on one of the reels. Yeah. Like, the, 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 if you remember the movie, the scene where, like, the government comes in and they're wearing all the suits or The white whatnot. mask, the white, the, the, uh, the, yeah. Hazmat suits. The hazmat suits, where they're coming in. Like, at that point, it was all, uh, like, double exposed or mm-hmm. something. For I mean, it was only, like, 30 seconds, you know, less than a minute. But, I mean, I was, like, freaked out. As it, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Man, Steven Spielberg really did a number on this. <laughs> So I had to order a new reel for it. So I hope that answers your face-off question. Uh, Let's do some news (laughs) of the geek. So this is coming in on our Twitter, Bad Ideas Podcast. Breaking news from Randall Holt, RJ Holt 666. He is evil. Uh, He states... Is it a good idea that Daniel Bryan got medically cleared today to go back to wrestling after being off for three years? Sure, why not? Uh, he's had a lot of concussions. Uh, supposedly a lot of doctors outside of the WWE cleared him about a year ago, but WWE didn't because he was having major neck and uh, head issues. Yeah, he had a, he broke his neck. Well, yeah, and then his concussions were not yeah. good because he was doing a diving headbutt. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's going to go wrong is he's going to mess up his brain and possibly kill a bunch of people before <laughs> killing himself. But that can go wrong. <laughs> but if we can get a Daniel Bryan versus Nakamura uh, WrestleMania match, I'm all for it. I think that's a small price to pay. Now, he'll be cleared to wrestle in WrestleMania? Yes, he just got cleared today. Uh, I think part of it is because AJ Styles... Is it a real doctor or a fake doctor? <laughs> Dr. Spock <laughs> cleared him. Dr. Uh, Spock was a real doctor? That's true. <laughs> a baby doctor. Uh, actually, Dr. Phil cleared him, so it's perfectly oh. fine. And who's the guy, the Dr. Oz? He cleared him, too. Perfectly Dr. Oz fine. is actually a medical doctor. Yeah, I don't trust he's, anything he's he says. He's a crook and a shyster, yes. but he's a medical doctor. <laughs> Allegedly. Dr. Phil, I don't even think he's even a PhD. 
D doctor. Well, he did change his first name to Doctor. He's so a psycho- he technically he's a psychologist. Yes, I don't, I don't think he's even yeah. got that. He's, he's not a psychiatrist. He's a psychologist. Yes, he's, whichever one isn't a real doctor or psychologist. He's a, okay, maybe he's just psycho. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. How but does that I, make you feel? <laughs> makes me feel like I want to punch the guy who created the TV show Bowl. <laughs> oh, so bad. It is so bad. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Katz also cleared him, too, so that was good. Ah, Dr. Yeah. Quinn did, too. Oh. <laughs> did Dr. Jason Bowl clear him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you bring in Quincy when it's all done. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so uh, they did uh, clear him. Uh, the rumor is because AJ Styles actually did get hurt at a house show because it's 2018. Let's have these wrestlers wrestle 300 days a year because that's smart. Uh, fucking idiots. Cut them back. Uh, anyway, so uh, should he wrestle? No. No. No, he should not. If uh, he's medically cleared and he wants it, to do it, again, why not? I agree with you on that part. Personally, after suffering three major concussions, I would not do that. We'll put it this way, though. They medically cleared Rocky Balboa to fight. Yeah, that guy didn't really have much. <laughs> no, they didn't. Against uh, Mason the Line Dixon, what didn't they medically clear him to yes, fight? Yes, they did. That is, they yeah. wouldn't clear him to fight in Rocky Five. Well, that but was, that was Vegas. He'll clear anybody to fight. <laughs> I really enjoyed Creed because the whole thing was Michael uh, B. Jordan just spoon feeding Sylvester Stallone the whole movie. <laughs> It's really about his uh, adapt adaptation to the retirement home, so that was nice. I can't wait for the next one when he has to debate whether or not to pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 38-second movie. Okay, uh, click. I like doodles, that's like do beep. Wait, uh, on the air? <laughs> Unfortunately, he only get this Tommy Morrison autographed picture. That's the only thing he has left. Don't I even get the robot? No. No, Paulie still has the robot. Paulie's dead. In Creed. What? Yeah, he's yeah. dead. So, yeah. Killed Paulie is bad enough you killed uh, Adrian. I think Paulie's dead. I don't know. Is, I don't is Rocky Jr. dead? No, they don't uh, acknowledge him. Oh. Uh, he did burn in a house fire because a crock pot was left on, so that's uh, why. Oh, so. yeah, he did die. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Adrian is dead, though, in it. So, uh, big changes are currently, oh, again, taking place behind the scenes of DC Films Universe. Pierce Flashpoint, the movie starring The Flash, ah! is finally starting together. What? It's starting to come together. Flashpoint? So- uh, no, not the TV show. Uh, Spider-Man colon Homecoming writers John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein were hired to direct the movie last month, and now report uh, reveals that the hope is for it to start shooting in London in the second half of the year. John Francis Daly, the guy from uh, Freaks and Geeks? Freaks and Geeks and uh, Bones, Bones. and Yes, that's okay. him. The bad news is they hired the directors but no writers, so they don't have a script. <laughs> but they're going to f- start filming by the end of the year, so that's good. Uh, it's expected to have a budget of over $100 million because it's D.C., and plenty of time is being left for VFX works. Meaning we can take out mustaches if need be. Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> As there will or be back a- tattoos. <laughs> I, I, I still have yet to see Justice League. I, did t- I haven't yet. Uh, yeah. We're going to get through that together, Jeff. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't have to have Bruce Wayne topless. We could just put a shirt on him. That way we don't have to use special effects to get his tattoo out. Damn it, I need a topless Bruce Wayne. Damn it. Ben Affleck has a giant phoenix on his back. Uh, let's see. Uh, there were also awful lot of it is... Oh, sorry. The special effects work, there will be awful lot of it due to the Scarlet Speedster's unique abilities. Details on the plot are scarce, but that hashtag show says the cyborg... That cyborg, Ray Fisher, Billy Crudup, Henry Allen, and Iris West, all uh, cursed Clemens, all expected to appear despite the fact... Wait a minute. Is that right? What? The character is named Billy Crudup, and he's played by Henry Allen. No, no that should be reversed. Around. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, Iris and Cyborg. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, Billy Crudup is playing himself in it. <laughs> is, is he going to have a big blue penis? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he's playing himself, so he just walks around. <laughs> Billy, put some clothes on. I, I but it's blue. blue. <laughs> it's a big blue penis. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag me too. Uh, anyways, it appears yeah, that's a blue balls. <laughs> a number of roles <laughs> need to be filled, including Officer Fred Kyrie, a Keystone Cop. Yeah, Keystone Cop. 
Uh, working with Barry Allen to investigate the death of Jonathan Chambers slash Johnny Quick. Johnny Quick. <laughs> Detective Jared Morolo is also set to appear, as are Caitlin Snow, Captain Cold, and Heat Wave. You know, you could just hire them from the CW. Yeah, see, they're all there. Here's the kicker, Except though. Except for maybe Johnny Quick. They don't have a Johnny Quick. No, today. no. I think in Legends they might have had a Johnny Quick. Is I'm trying to remember. I could be mistaken. Isn't Johnny Quick like the the guy from the bad universe? Yes, I believe He's so. Like the evil, the evil universe where all the superheroes are actually evil. Yes, and uh, well, yes. Johnny Quick guy. is the speedster version. Yes, in that. I believe you are correct. Uh, here's the kicker. Then this is the thing that interests me. Doctor Arthur Light will reportedly serve as Flashpoint's big bad guy. Dr. Light, I can see that. An unexpected choice and probably not the most, not who most of us expected. It said the film would include some references or potential flashbacks to Barry's accident, of course, because it's got to be an origin story. Yeah. An accident, we're told, that will include Eobard Thawne in an interesting way. It won't be the same without Reverse Flash, uh, and it seems that this is going to be a very much Flash movie rather than a Justice League. Well, that is all Flash-related characters. Yeah. And the going majority re- of them are actually in the Flash TV show, so... They're going to reboot DC Universe films with this, right? Oh, certainly. Ben Affleck's gone after this. Oh, uh, probably. I thought he had one more. This. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. He had the Batman, but then the new director who's do- who did War of the Planet of the Apes is also writing it, and they said they're butting heads on it, so they're- he's gone. I didn't... Uh, in Just League, I didn't think he was that bad. I haven't seen Justice League. I actually don't have a problem with Ben Affleck as Batman, as Bruce Wayne. Yes. The problem is, though, the DC wanted to go different and have an older Batman. And then they realized, oh, we want future movies and we want a younger Batman. Well, that's your own dumb fault, yeah, then. Uh, I, you could, it's comics. You can reboot it if you want. No one, <laughs> Only nerds like us will care. And we don't even care that much <laughs> about we'll DC. we'll go see it anyway. Yeah. Although we didn't go see that one yet. No, we, no, no. And wait, we don't wait a minute. They can save Justice League with time travel. Time travel. That's there what they're go. doing. That's what Flashpoint is. you don't need time travel. You can just say... Refrigerator magnets? <laughs> Different movie. <laughs> well, Flashpoint issue is Thomas Wayne becomes Batman in it. And so and Martha Wayne becomes the Joker. So I'm like, how do you not have Batman in it? Like, if it's going to be more Flash-centric, that's fine. But you got to have... The whole point of Flashpoint is to shake up everything. So I'm just saying. Or vibrate me, quickly? Vibrate, yes. Uh, in a report from Reuters, uh, which claims to have internal documents from Amazon that reveal not only production and marketing costs, but also the strategy Amazon uses to determine whether or not a show is successful. Thanks, Des Hassing, on this. It's called the Cost Per First Stream Approach, which analyzes the viewing habits of new Prime sus- uh, subscribers. The data reveals that Man in the High Castle Season 2 cost $107 million to produce, and it's not paying off the way the company wanted it to. Season one of Man in the High Castle will cost $72 million to make, with an average first stream viewership of 1.15 million subscribers, which amounts to $63 per new subscriber. Season two costs more, had fewer subscribers, and it's cost uh, $829 per new stream or well, news. I'd say they had fewer new subscribers. I mean, eventually, there's only so many new people to sign up for. Correct. Mm. You're, you're probably getting close to the number of people who are wanting to sign up for it anyway. And don't you think, though, like, as you get new subscribers, you're also getting a lot more new content? You know, so, you know because, it's, I don't know. It feels like you're ignoring older subscribers if you're saying, we're only doing this to get new people. How about to keep old people from canceling? Well, season two's inflated budget and dwindling viewership could spell doom for the series going forward. Uh, CEO Jeff Bezos and his company aren't shying away from spending money, though, because they're developing prestige television series. Their two-season investment in the upcoming Lord of the Rings prequel series could approach a half a billion dollars, which is three times the amount of cost to develop the first two seasons of Man in the High Castle combined. Uh, for fans of Man in the High Castle, season three did uh, is getting... Yeah, it got... Yeah, uh, green light. Yeah, it's being made right now. Uh, oh, that's on the next page. Uh, it will yeah. premiere in 2018, uh, but uh, it will also remain to see how long this financial model can prove as successful for Amazon. <laughs> Ultimately, it seems like Amazon's goal is just to get people back to the site regardless of what they're streaming, because as Bezos said in 2016, when we win a Golden Globe, it helps us sell more shoes. There you go. Yeah. So if you have depressing shows, you get people wanting to shop more. You know, Amazon Prime sells shoes? Yeah. There you go. 
I've had. Uh, you should be going to Zappos for your shoes anyway. <laughs> I go to pets.com. <laughs> Still waiting for them to relaunch. Uh, I will say uh, that you know, Amazon's it, prime it, schedule, like being, being paid in Hobie IOUs, we go to pay less. <laughs> <laughs> they take them. Yeah. They t- <laughs> Toys Interesting R- fact. <laughs> Another fun fact, Toys R Us does too. Now they're bankrupt. <laughs> Shh. Did I read the right that they were five hundred billion in debt? Or five billion in debt, whichever one? I don't five, even fi- they went five billion in debt when uh investment firms uh <coughs> decided that they wanted to take the company private. Mm-hmm. So they had to buy back all the stock and they borrowed against that. That's a good choice. So they went five billion in debt. To do so, and apparently they owe about eight billion now because they could barely pay off their interest. So how are they a lot uh, dwindling down? But Netflix is twelve billion in debt and still going fine. Uh, because Netflix is the future. I'm just, where no, a brick and mortar toy store is. Although they said their sales didn't drop even during the recession, their sales were at least even. Mm-hmm. But their debt was so big that they couldn't. Possibly ever pay. Well, it. people were complaining that their stores are pretty awful looking, and they are like they they're are. rough. And they said they wanted to reinvest and redo all the stores, even make them smaller, yeah. but they couldn't have the money because they were paying off the the uh, interest yeah. on the debt. Well, yeah. I know. I used to work at Toys R Us for a couple of years, and after I left, they remodeled the store I was in, and I hated the remodel. It's I, still they haven't remodeled since. <laughs> Yeah, I'll know. But, I mean, I hate it. You walked in, and you couldn't figure out where anything was. Well, they said uh, uh, they wanted to remodel a lot of the stores because they had 1,000 stores, I think, or 1,200 in America. And they said they wanted to add kids' rooms and uh, party rooms that you could rent out, which actually was pretty smart after they redid everything so they could make money on the rentals and the to- birthday yeah. parties and that. Oh, they God. just never got a chance to do that. Could I'm you imagine so... being a worker and doing that? Oh, no. I'm so glad I wasn't working there when they did <laughs> stuff like that. Well, they didn't get to that point because, you know, they, they went on a, off of a horrible Ikea model. <laughs> you walk in and you're trying to find whatever toy you're looking for. You couldn't find it. And... Yeah. But you did buy a couch. But so it worked out yeah, well. Exactly. <laughs> That's my bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I couldn't find that Barbie, but I got bunk you know, beds. You know what's pretty funny? I, I, we were, me and the old lady, the female perspective, we're at Ikea last week looking at furniture and ideas oh, for the house. And as soon as you walk in, there was these bins of little squeegees, little glass cleaners for 99 cents. She's like, oh, I want one of these. She just grabbed it. And throughout the entire store, which you know it takes an hour to walk through yes. because it's a maze. I hate I it. pointed you know, out you get I, No, I pointed no, out they're awful. I pointed out ten more bins of those ninety nine cent squeezes <laughs> that were all throughout the store. And the best part was there's a bit of them by the cashiers. I said, "See, you didn't even have to carry that damn thing. <laughs> you could just picked one up here at the checkout." Ikea's rough to walk. Did through. it break yet? No, I don't think I don't even think we can find it now. <laughs> it's lost in the mess <laughs> of stuff. My wife likes going to IKEA. Yeah. We usually don't buy much there, but it's like, I dread it, and she's like, let's just get through this, and I'm, she's like, you're like a 10-year-old, or, I'm just like, are we done yet? This is awful, please. Yeah, the, the best secret is trying to find the secret exits. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. cut, you cut the through. Cutters. Yeah. The worst part about Ikea isn't going there to shop there, mm-hmm. isn't buying, isn't like paying for something there, it isn't even putting it together. It's out after you get it, you put it together, and you look at it, you're like... Oh, shit, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually sitting in an Ikea chair, though, Jim. Exactly. <laughs> There's a reason it's in the Bob Studios. Uh-huh. Hey, the Ikea Calyx bookshelves are the perfect uh, shelves for uh, board game collections. Yeah. There you go. There Thanks. you go. Uh, this episode of uh, News of the Geek is sponsored by Ikea. Uh, <laughs> well, the worst part, Jim, after you put it together, you go, I could have bought this in one piece at Target. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, lastly, also, uh, Pop Culture Podcast did have a uh, question for us tonight. Will you miss Toys R Us? Speak of Toys R Us. Will you uh, miss it? No. Uh, since I left there from working, yeah, no, I really didn't go back. I, now, granted, I don't have children, so there are very few things I wanted to buy there, and they're board game selections, you know, when I was mm-hmm. getting into, you know, new board games, they didn't really keep up with they just still did your Parker's Brothers and uh, Milton Bradley crap. They didn't really do any of the uh, designer board games there. 
I won't talk so. bad. I will miss them because uh, our local one is about 50% off now. Some 80%. Let me tell you, we got lots of giveaways for the Cincinnati Comic Expo this year. We got lots of prizes. for If you play us in trivia at our booth, we got lots of prizes. Thank, courtesy of Toys R Us. Can we make our own Hobie mystery boxes? Oh, we might. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yeah, let's cause, spend a, or charge $100 yeah. for it. <laughs> Everybody's just going to pay an IOUs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You come no, up and give us an license then. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have vendor license. We'll walk to a vendor and put our box in there and sell it. We'll get Dev to do it. (laughs) No, he's going to have something else different in that box. I'm not touching it. (laughs) We're going to get SourcePoint Press to sponsor it. Anyways, finally, from comicbookmovie.com, Justice League, speaking of that movie, run at the worldwide box office is finally at an end and has now made a total of $657.9 million worldwide. Noble contrast to what the Avengers made in 2012, $1.5 billion. There's a difference, though. Avengers was the first team-up superhero movie back then. And it was well done. Yeah, well, okay. Batman v Superman, colon, Donna Martha, was widely expected to be a one-plus uh, billion dollar hit, but it made only $873.6 million. What all this means, though, is that Justice League is the lowest-grossing DC film movie to date. That's a good sign. An embarrassing result for Warner Brothers, which goes a long way in explaining why this division is now being shaken up. Also, um, really? It's lower than uh, Green Lantern? I don't think that's part of the DC Universe. Don't say DC Universe, it's just DC Film. DC Universe. <laughs> uh, it also points to Justice League sequel being very long off. So there you go. Bye, bye sequel. On well, a side note, because I really don't care about Justice League, I will miss Toys R Us because I will miss ha- taking my kids into a toy store. I love going into toy stores and looking. There's still other toy stores. Yeah, but they're, like, expensive, most of them. Is there a children's palace around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one right away a long oh, time okay. ago. Johnny's oh, Toys. Johnny's. Uh, KB John, toys. Johnny's was around. There's a Johnny's yeah. around. A children's palace. KB's is gone. Children's yeah. palace. That's the one that used to have the uh, the towers and the mm-hmm. castle wall. Yeah. yeah. I always thought that was pretty Pe- cool. I did cool. I, didn't like I worked kid. there before. Before I worked at Toys R Us, I worked Did there you? as uh, from a couple of, you know, uh, Christmases away uh, from when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Christmas and summer breaks, I worked at uh, uh, Children's Palace, and then they disappeared, and Toys R Us opened nearby, so I went there instead. How is Toys R Us failing and GameStop is still alive? God, fuck that place. Because. GameStop pays you thirteen cents for a game and sells yep. it for eight dollars. Yeah, that's true. That is it's true. A better, it's a better model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go uh, to some box office news. Oh, we got some friends first. Hey, this is Liz, and this is Heather, and we are Nerdy Bitches Podcast, a show where two geeky ladies podcast their way through pop culture. From movies and TV to our regular book club and everything in between, we bring you our favorite fandoms with a feminine eye. We're talking Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, DC Marvel, comic books, and anime. And don't forget sci-fi, fantasy, action movies, video games, D&D, board games, and so much more. Be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbeam, or wherever you find awesome podcast you can also find us hanging out on twitter facebook instagram pinterest and at nerdybitches.com talk to you soon jeff what are you doing september 14th through 16th i'm going to the cincinnati comic expo hobie will be there it's at the duke energy convention center again september 14th through the 16th you can get your tickets at cincinnati comic expo.com also look at their facebook page cincinnati comic expo because uh, they announce new guests every week, usually on Tuesdays, which is nice because we, then we, we can, can uh, report them. Alejandro Rosado from Oh Yeah Comics will be there this year. So he's the newest one. He's a graphic illustrator and publisher. Uh, he's been there before, I believe. Uh, also, winter is coming to the expo, right? Yes, Am I Nikolai correct? Costa-Waldo. Thank you. I don't know Game of Thrones, but yes, yes, that's it. Uh, local artist David Michael Beck will be there. Uh, He's coming back to the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Also, Carl Urban was just announced last week. Boom. There you go, bitches. Carl effing Urban. We might even have Nikki from uh, New New Zealand Zealand show up because of that. So, yeah, Carl Urban will be there from Judge Dredd, Star Trek, Thor. He was in Thor. He was in Game of Thrones, wasn't he? 
No. Okay, well, I thought so. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Lord of the Rings. He was in Lord of the Rings. That he was definitely in Lord there of the go. Rings. And I forgot all about this. He was in the Riddick series. Oh, yeah. He was in uh, the Chronicles of Riddick. It's been a long time since Smelled Beautiful. Actually, I was pretty impressed because I was like, oh, he's that guy. Oh, wait, and he's that guy. Oh, and he's that guy. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm wow, that's pretty impressive. He's pretty much, he's the... the uh, the fanboy's uh, patron saint right about now, because he's in everything. Everything, yeah. Also, Jose Delbo, uh, who drew Wonder Woman and Transformers back in the late 80s, and that uh, first appearance at the Expo since 2011. He will be back. Uh, and also, Kobe Smolders will be there, too, from How I Met Your Mother. She's Maria Hill in Avengers, and uh, she is in the Netflix show, right? The Friends show? Uh, Friends from College. There you go. In so, uh, and the Slammin' Salmon. Yes, she is. <laughs> Can we get her autograph that DVD? That would be great. The Slam and Salmon I would, DVD? I like it. I'll bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Jim. Uh, yes, so September 14th through the 16th at the Duke Energy Convention Center. Uh, check out CincinnatiComicExpo.com. And Hobie says hello. It's time for Box Office Bombs. All right. This week's Box Office Report, we're going straight to the top five. Because nothing really bombed this week. Uh, number one. What's the number one again, Jay? Black Panther. Grr. How many weeks is that number one? Five weeks. First time since uh, Avatar did it in 2009. All right. So next week when they're the sixth. They have a week? shot. And we'll talk about that at the end of this. Well, will that, will that then go back to even previous? Is that break I Avatar? Check. I will okay. check it. Uh, made $27 million, a total of $605.5 million here domestically on its $200 million budget. Bomb. <laughs> uh, Tomb Raider, I think they didn't make as much as the, uh, 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 I was going to say network, no, the uh, studio wanted, but it still made a decent $23.5 million. The reason a, this is not... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, out of $94 million budget. Bomb. It was not a bomb. Well, it is well, national, domestic, uh, domi- domestically. Uh, international made $101 million, but they said they were disappointed. They were hoping for like oh, $30 million. They wanted it to take down Black Panther. Yeah. That was never going to happen. And they, apparently it was huge in China. Yeah. Tomb yeah, Raider was big in China. Uh, I can only imagine made $17 million in its opening weekend of $7 million. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it made more than double its uh, budget back. I can only imagine weekend. is a Christian based movie. Good, because I didn't know what it was about. I can no. only imagine. Uh, I forget who's in it. It might be Kevin Sorbo. I don't know, uh, but it looks amazing. Yeah, it's Kevin Sorbo, definitely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right until proven wrong. That's right. Uh, and Kirk Cameron <laughs> together. Ooh. <laughs> so let me fight uh, Satanism one uh, yeah, movie at a time. He's now fighting social media with kids and teenagers and that, which is a good cause. Like you know, they're addicted to their phones. Mm-hmm. I ended up watching like oh, oh. like a ten minute thing for it, like a trailer free trailer for his movie. Yeah. Oh god, it was so bad, and I can't stop watching him. And he's so bad, Did, I can't do it. I just can't stop. I can't. You, you saw the video where him and his friend told you why the banana is proof that God exists. <sighs> yes, because it's a perfect thing. And you know what? <laughs> oh. The funny thing is, after I watched the trailer or whatever, the ten minutes of I wish I had my life back. About his new show, film. I, I, I had my life back. That's his new film. Yes. Uh, yeah. That is, I actually ended up watching the banana video again. And I was like, oh, dear God, Kirk. Go away. Okay, I do got the, uh, I can only imagine, uh, plot summary. The inspiring and unknown true story behind Mercy Me's beloved chart-topping song that brings ultimate hope to so many is a gripping reminder of the power of true forgiveness. That's a Christian band, isn't it? Yes, Mercy Me is a yes. Christian band. Oh, yes. I thought it was some girl named Mercy Me. <laughs> Mercy Me's. Mercy. <laughs> is that French? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mercy Me. Didn't they play at, a, at the ballpark after a ball game a couple years back? I think they were at yes. L- Lollapalooza. Yeah, okay. yes. And uh, so on the top build cast, the person I recognize is Trace Adkins. Uh, also, <laughs> Dennis Quaid is in it. And uh, also, Chloris Leachman. Ooh. So there you go. All right. Uh, number four this week, we have A Wrinkle in Time. It made another $16.5 million, a total of 61 on a $100 million budget. 
That's struggling. It is struggling. Do we? We don't know uh, internationally. Does that I can get that international. Yeah. Flair? It's doing okay, but they said Disney is kind of worried because they put like two hundred million dollars into marketing. Okay, you paid twice as much for marketing than yes. into making the film? So it's not making its money back. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Didn't uh, we talk about the problem with it is because they marketed people and not the story? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe Cloris Leachman is playing the same character she does in the television show... Uh, Mod? Uh, Raising Hope. Raising, Raising Hope. Hope. <laughs> she plays Meemaw. Uh, <laughs> no joke. <laughs> she does. <laughs> awesome. You know, Cloris Leachman is not on the Hollywood Stock Exchange. I looked. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> and uh, Love, Simon made $11.5 million in its opening weekend on a $17 million budget. They said they wanted a little bit more because it was getting good reviews. Yeah. And uh, But they said that they hope it sticks around because there's not many other teen comedy, romantic comedy. No, there really aren't. So, uh, what else we got coming up here? We've got Specific Rim, Uprising. Why? Sherlock Gnomes. And no, I didn't mispronounce that one like the first one. That's actually the name of it. I didn't even bother to look that up. I saw Sherlock it's a cartoon. Gnomes and I went, no. <laughs> and <laughs> Did you say gnome? I said gnome. <laughs> gnome. <Yeah. laughs> and Paul, Apostle of Christ. Yeah. So we're getting the Easter stuff out now. I know. When I think Easter, I think Pacific Rim. And um, Sherlock Gnomes. Does anyone care about Pacific Rim? No, no, not really. They didn't want to see it the first time it was out. It was not. It was not as good as they should. It should have been. Well, I, I the first one I was intriguing because yes. you did have uh, you at least Charlie had Hunnam, Hunnam. Look, Guillermo del Toro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had director. a name director attached yeah. to it. Yeah. And then you had Charlie Hunnam, Eldris, uh, Idris Elba. Mm-hmm. Pretty good cast in there. Who's this one going to star? Charlie Day. No, this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has John Boyega, Finn, John Boyega, yeah, and Charlie Day. <laughs> <laughs> so. Charlie Day can't carry your movie. You're in trouble. Let's take the Star Wars guy and mash him up with It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia Janitor. We can't miss. And well, we'll, I don't think it's a good idea. But we'll have giant fighting robots. And we'll spend $130 million to make it. And oh, giant God. alien creatures. I want to know what the, the budget is for this. Anyways, Plus, what else we got? Oh, on Paul, Apostle of Christ, I'm intrigued because you get Jesus himself, Jim Caviezel, playing Luke. Well, I'm going to be confused. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Is this canon in the Jesus I universe? Was, I thought you said he's going to make a cameo appearance. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got any band-aids for my hands? <laughs> Boo. So is this Jesus canon? Because I'm going to be confused if he's playing two different characters. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> in the Passion Universe, I need to know if I'm this still, is canon. I'm still confused who Chris Evans is supposed to be <laughs> in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> I think it's pretty explanatory. He's Captain uh, America. Uh, I'm not no, the Human Torch. He's Torch Boy. <laughs> I'm still confused as who Chris Klein is in the Street Fighter Universe. I'm still confused by that. <laughs> and, and not only that... Uh, Michael B. Jordan is also not Torch Boy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's Killmonger. <laughs> well, uh, the three uh, three billboards outside Ebbing was funny because it's directed and written by uh, Martin McDow- McDowell, and who was M. Bison in the Street Fighter Legend of Chung Lee. Oh, that guy. Oh, yes. really? He wrote and directed that? The whole time I kept thinking, oh, God, I'm liking a film by M. Bison. I can't do this. That's all I kept thinking about. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he did do that. So, okay. yeah. what do we got by sell? Uh, we have Dennis Quaid. Ooh, Quato. He is at seventeen dollars and fifty six cents on the Hollywood Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. By comparison, Frank Lagella is at thirteen thirty three. So, when they make the Rookie <laughs> Two and Masters of the Universe Two. Their stock's going to go up. <laughs> I'm hoping to buy Dennis Quaid so I can get Randy Quaid to show up. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn him into the U.S. government and get whatever type of reward is out for him. <laughs> how, how old is Frank Langella now? Uh, 83. Yeah. And he's, he's, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he's, he's just about the same price as Dennis Quaid. Yeah. Uh, basically, they, actually, it can kick the can about any time. 80. 80. 80. <laughs> Look at that. Close. Fuck yeah, I was close. But, uh, but Frank Langella's been in some quality movies. Masters of the Universe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, after well, Dream... and a terrible one. <laughs> Masters of the Universe. It's true. After Dreamscape, it was all downhill <laughs> for Dennis Quaid. 
<laughs> Dreamscape. Uh, our intern Rocket this week said, please, thanks for these great, great uh, comparisons, because it took them about 20 minutes to, uh, for Rocket to find comparisons to Dennis Quaid and the next one. The next one is... Oh, least... wait, are we all buying or selling? I'm buying. Oh, yeah, we didn't get oh. to that point. I'll buy for $17. I'll buy a stock. Um... Yeah, I think I'm selling it. He'll be in a Marvel film sometime. I, I think he'll... I have bet as him just being a... Uh, cause I, he's not even, like... I mean, he's... A, 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 a main character in that film. <laughs> <laughs> On the list of people in the thing, he is, like, 47. But he's the biggest name in the film. Uh, I'm just getting a text from Rocket, our intern, and he did say that if he knew Trace Atkins was in it, he would have put him down. <laughs> He also did say that two other people in front of uh, Dennis Quaid were not on the Hollywood Stock Exchange yet, so he apologizes. I would probably sell because, <laughs> he, again, he, he's just going to be a side character. I don't, I don't see him carrying anything. Uh, I would sell because he's taking bit roles <laughs> in, in Christian films. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to sell my Dennis Quaid stock and yeah. buy Frank Langella stock because when... <laughs> When Jella kicks off, you're going to make money on the homages to him. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to take your bet. I'm going to go with you. Yeah. I'm going to sell Dennis Quaid. I'm changing. I'm buying Frank Latron. That's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, buying sell, uh, Alicia Vikander, mm-hmm. the new Lara Croft. Mm-hmm. She's at $48.47. Comparison, Jennifer Lawrence is at $64.46. And that's an undervalued Jennifer Lawrence stock. Yeah, yeah, we discussed I'm that a couple weeks buy, ago, I think. I'm still yeah. going to buy Jennifer Lawrence stock, too. I think I'll also pick up some... Uh, I'll Alicia, pick up Vikander. Alicia Vikander. I mean, she's, you know... She, she's nominated, like, yearly for, like, stuff <laughs> in the Oscars. That was good. That was a good job. <laughs> yeah. Showed up in the Jason Bourne movie. Uh, um, Ex Machina. Mm-hmm. Ex Machina. She Ex does. Machina. Machina. <laughs> Blake, you buying or selling? I'm selling. Okay. This is it. I'm going to say, I know she, she does. She does Laura Croft. It's all downhill from here. She, she, she I'll buy. She goes back and forth. I know she'll do, like, a, yeah, Laura Croft movie, but then she'll do, you know, a drama that, that gets, you know, respect. And I think she's, I think she's, she's got a long career ahead of her. There's your buy sell. Uh, I just got a text from our intern, Rocket. He said, fuck you all for this week. Good. Rocket's uh, fired. Damn. Just because I hate the name Rocket. Damn, I gotta hire somebody new. <laughs> Make sure Severance pays IOUs. <laughs> Top five, Jeff. Top five. That's what that music means. What is it this week? Our top five this week. Uh, let me see what the official uh, word that Rocket put down on the. Uh, uh, let me find it. I lost it. I got a top five favorite hangouts in television, like bars, restaurants, houses. You know, just some place to places hang out. where people hang out. Yes. that were on television. So, Jeff, what's your number five this week? Oh, I'm gonna have to open my. Never mind, door. Jim. What's your number five? My number five. Got a hobby. This shit. Oh, of course. Let's go to. Uh, Elzar's Fine Cuisine from Futurama. Okay. The Drunken Clam from Family Guy. And everybody's favorite, uh, Moe's from The Simpsons. So your animated list. Animated list, my number five. Okay. Drunken Clam was an honorable mention for me. Mm. Okay. And too bad you'll never be able to go to those places because Uh. they're not real. (laughs) Neither is wrestling. That doesn't stop us from talking about it. Neither is Game of Thrones. (laughs) Uh, my number five. Oh, we're going well, oh wait, what, what also didn't make it on the <laughs> was the broken stool. No, the Cleveland show one didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Bob's Burgers? Does that make it? No. Okay. They work there. They don't hang out there. Uh, number five, because it's a place I feel like they would accept me. I'm t- picking Cheers. My number one. Wow. Okay. Is it? Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> No, it's my number two. Okay. Number I, two. I it's cheers. on my list, but I, I didn't number my list. I just wrote a bunch of them out. <laughs> I didn't rank them yet. It would have been on my list, but everybody's going to say it. So, yeah. But uh, I thought about not putting it on for that, but I'm like, no, nah, but, you know, a, a group that has Cliff Clavin in it, I wouldn't even be the dorkiest guy in the group. Yeah. So, I felt like debatable. 
Oh, come on. What about Paul? Paul's there, too. Okay, okay Paul. I, I just want you to know, I've been to Boston. I've been to the bar. That I is, have, that is what calls you. There's no room for a live studio audience. No. <laughs> that place, you're like in a tunnel. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the bar was also much, much bigger in the yeah. show than it was uh, in real life. The, the only thing realistic about it is the little stairwell that goes down. I mean, yes. It's not yeah. the actual What was it called? The... Uh, the Bull and Finch. Bull and Finch. Bull and Finch. Which yes. they have since gotten rid of that name and just named it Cheers. Yeah. Because it's a little touristy. Because that's what everyone knows it is, anyway. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Blue Oyster Bar. No, that's movies. That's movies. Oh, that's right. Television. That's right. Wait, is Gary's on your list then? <laughs> I don't know what Gary's is. The bar that they competed Cheers. Che- oh, oh, Gary's oh, West Side or no? no. no. <laughs> Gary's, that is the, the... Gary's Old Town Tavern? Yes. 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 <laughs> No, Not Gary's about isn't on my list because I wouldn't fit in with the Gary's crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number five is Jitters, the coffee shop in the Flash TV series. Uh, uh, I don't want Central Perk because they look like assholes. And there's yeah. this, this pretentious whole, assholes. Yeah, and these click fucking click team a group of people are sitting on the couch all the yeah, time. Yeah, you wouldn't Fuck be them. able to sit on the couch because they're yeah. occupied. They got all reserved. Time. Yeah, it yeah. was like when people tried to sit on the food times at the doghouse, they couldn't get in because Jason mm. was passed out on it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on! And we drew on his face. <laughs> and number five, Jitters! Uh, Blake, what you got number five? I was, uh, Say cheers. Cheers is <laughs> my number five. Did you do a number five? Did he, you he just, just said he didn't put him in order. I didn't put him oh, in order. He so just wrote a bunch since down. Cheers was taken. He's throwing it at five. I'm so glad Jason pays attention to what Blake says. <laughs> yeah. I, just, no, I, don't, I just think you ignore me. I just changed his <laughs> batteries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blake Bot is now officially working. Uh, what's your number four, Blake Bot? Uh, I'm going to give you three choices. Okay. Uh, the second you, one. <laughs> Go second. All right. The second one, I hope he did. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, they're from the same TV show. Okay. Uh, Blue's original Frozen Banana Stand. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yep. Jerry Pivens. <laughs> and Jeremy Piven. Jerry. Do you remember the, the club and Jeremy Piven? Yes. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go back. And, and it, Jeremy Piven. Have you seen uh, Entourage? Yeah. The yeah. entry to Entourage, uh, they, they like have everybody's names up in oh, lights and everything, and, and it says, and, and Jeremy, Jeremy Piven, Piven, and yeah. it was the lights of like a, a club. <laughs> so they actually had one of those. A club was called and, and Jeremy Piven. Yeah, Piven's. and Jeremy Piven. I missed that joke. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason, you know why I said the banana stand? Because there's always money, money in the in banana. banana stand. And no, the mix. because frozen chocolate bananas are really good. <laughs> <laughs> My number four, Jeff will appreciate this. You may not know it though right away. Companion House Madrasa. That is in Firefly. It's in Nara Sarah's training ground and main house where she's from. She is a woman, a companion. Wow. Monica. Not Monica. No, uh, uh, who's the... Uh, Warren Bac- Yes. Bac- uh, no, from Deadpool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, it is her companion Marina Bac- house. Karen. Yes. Karen, yeah. Baccarin. It is her yeah. companion house in Firefly. I See, would love to hang out there. I <laughs> thought you were about to say Littlefinger's brothel. Where's I discussed <laughs> that uh, when I was coming up with oh, my... Did? Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't look up the name of it, because you know he didn't call it Littlefinger because he didn't like being referred to it's as true. Littlefinger. It's true. Mockingbird. So, what's your number three or four, Jeff? Uh, my number four is uh, the Pot Circle and Foreman's Basement in that '70s oh, show. Oh, okay, that's a pretty good one. That's a good one. Did you um, did you include uh, what the hub? No, I did not include the hub. The hub. Pff, nothing on my list is going to be like a teenage hangout, <laughs> except for maybe the Pot Circle in the basement. <laughs> no peach pit. No peach pit. Nope. Nope, Jeff nope, or nope, Jim, nope, we know nope. that Jeff has a restraining order. There's a restraining order against him. He can't go. Yeah, I'm not allowed in the hub. Yeah. Uh, what's your number four, Jim? Mine is Chubby's from My Name Is Earl. Okay. Chubby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yes, the, the strip bar <laughs> where uh, uh, she bounces. <laughs> it's also the name of the club in Boy Meets World. Yes, it is. <laughs> the restaurant. It's spelled um, differently. It's E's in Boy Meets World. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what's your number three? I, I hope this one. Mm-hmm. I will go with uh, the Snake Hole Lounge and JJ's Diner. Ah, uh, they had those as honorable <laughs> mentions, both of them. Both from Parks and Rec. Oh, okay. Uh, I was trying to think JJ's, JJ's Diner. Diner has the best waffles <laughs> ever. That's true. And, That's true. And the Snake Hole Lounge... Did give us the best meme ever of Ron Swanson <laughs> dancing with the uh, little pillbox hat. Yes. 
Would you like a salad, sir? Am I a rabbit? No. Then I do not want a salad. <laughs> uh, good. Jeff, or Jeff, sorry, number three. Uh, my number three is the P3 Club in Charmed. Okay. They get some good live music coming through there, and I can always just stare at Alyssa Milano all Third Eye Blind played there. Mm-hmm. They did. <laughs> And Ralph Garman was uh, one of the DJs. Oh, yeah. Ralph Garman did several <laughs> sure. uh, roles in yeah. that show. Uh, my number three was uh, Pop's Chocolate Shop from Riverdale. Yeah, I saw that in common. Yeah. Uh, uh, why actually, wouldn't it be number one for you, Jason? Well, you know. Because this show sucked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, because they don't serve alcohol. You know what? Here's the thing. He wanted to get the shit from us out of the way. It was an quick. honorable mention. <laughs> And then some assholes on Twitter said, oh, I bet you it's going to be on Bringer's list, you know, Riverdale. Fuck you. It's on my list now, bitches. So I moved up to three. You're just playing into their hands. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> I'm very weak-minded. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can admit it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what you're trying to do is please your fans. Yes. <laughs> What's your, fan. <laughs> your number three? Uh, just uh, Number one. Do the first one. All right. Patty's Pub. Ah! Honorable mention. Honorable that's, mention. That's right. I like Patty's Pub. I, I just think I fear for my life if I was actually <laughs> well, yeah, there. It would be actually very entertaining. Yeah, I fear Don't for my think? life. Oh, well, I'd help myself. Three things would happen. <laughs> yeah. I would be hurt. Well, the, the <laughs> thing is, I don't think I've ever seen anybody pay at Patty's Pub, so that would be the bonus. <laughs> but there are people that drink there that aren't actually part of the show. <laughs> They're background people. But they actually there? Yeah, uh, but, but you have a chance very, to play Charlie rare. McDennis? Yes, yeah, true. that would scare me, though. Charlie McDennis. I've seen people get hurt playing Charlie McDennis. <laughs> I would be worried about... Uh, being thrown in a dog cage? At, or or possibly, uh, you know, <laughs> being Drinking busted paint? in an underage uh, party, because... That could be uh, an issue? Uh, well, you could be entertained by a talent show. Yes, you could. <laughs> she jumping on a trampoline? I'll go to Chubby's. <laughs> no, didn't they have the talent show yes. with a D? Yeah, probably. Did. They had the, the talent show. They the had the dance contest. Yeah, right. They had dance contest. Yeah. Uh, they had like the, oh, the McPoyle brothers might show up. <laughs> the McPoyle brothers might show up. Milk. It's true. <laughs> it's I true. still say the underage one was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, this place is hot, <laughs> man. And it took them forever to realize they were underage. Yes. <laughs> you know what you're not. Uh, you know, Mac can do a gay bar for a little be. bit. They did. Uh, yeah, you yeah, can have Mac do some karate moves on you. You know? The gay bar they did pay. Yes. Uh, they were <laughs> making right. money when it was yes. the gay bar, you're right. Uh, Blake, what's your number two? Uh, go with your last one. Go with my last one. Uh, the O Club from MASH. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the biggest problem with that is it's in the middle of a war zone. Yeah, but you were <laughs> able to drink back then. You can't do it nowadays. Oh, you can't do it? Oh, it's even worse. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather just hang out in the swamp. And drink their distilled, their homemade distilled. Yeah, and go blind. Yeah, well, why not? Why not? Uh, my <laughs> number get two. you out. <laughs> <laughs> if you go deaf, you can look behind Blake's house. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Just keep it down. <laughs> Just be quiet. What? Damn, I hate it when they tap dance. What? Uh, number two. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, Je- Jeff, what's your number two? We already said oh. that. I know that. Was, I know. Oh, I, I said that. It was on the board. Two. Simmer down over there. At least I put them in order. Uh, yeah. My number two is the Boar's Nest. What's that from? From uh, the oh, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, oh, the God. Boar's Nest. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah, you I can have Catherine that. Bach as Daisy Duke come yeah. wait on me all night long. How about Jessica, Jessica Simpson? Jessica Simpson. Well, that's the movie. We're talking television. But <laughs> yeah, either way. Okay. Yeah. Fat Jessica Simpson. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nick Lachey is with her. How uh, you go hang out with Shays? Oh, no, you oh, can't no. close. <laughs> uh, Jim, what's your number two? Uh, I hope he does one. I put The Hub, just for Jeff. Okay. <laughs> and Maggie's from The Ranch. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but then you might get raped by Danny. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I got a beard. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Allegedly. Uh, uh, what's your number that, one? Oh, that just went right by me real quick. Uh, uh, Danny Masterson, uh, the... Guy from the 70s show, he's in the ranch. Well, was until he got fired because about 12 people came forward saying that he raped them. Oh. So they're, he's now being investigated pretty thoroughly. Oh. Allegedly again. But they are going to finish their, make another season. They yeah, them. they're saying... Uh, they uh, Dax Shepard. No, Shepherd. Oh. Dax Shepard. Dax uh, Shepard. What's your number one? My number one is The Griffin from The New Girl. Eh. So you can go ahead and you can play a true American. I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know New Girl. Oh, oh, it's going right over my head again. Yep. Yeah. True they, American was a drinking game that they invented 
that oh you didn't understand the rules yeah you <laughs> and so they pretty much and you're not allowed to explain the rules to anybody you just have to play mm-hmm. and, I like that huh. and and they have actually established like rules and like our niece has true American parties where they play oh really <laughs> yes <laughs> the well, floor is tr- lava you can't oh the floor is lava in it yeah that's definitely <laughs> one of the rules there's the Bill Clinton version when it's a uh, st- uh, strip tease when you have to take off clothes <laughs> I like this <laughs> Jeff loses his pants. <laughs> Jeff, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is the Lido deck on the Love Boat. Isaac, ah, best you, bartender in television. Best bartender yep. television waiting on you while you I can watch all the bikini clad women and, and get, celebrities and, and get uh, life advice from yeah. them too. That's right. And Unfortunately, Chara will stop by every once in a while. <laughs> Chara, Chara, Chara. Coochie, coochie, coochie. <laughs> Unfortunately, you end up at Fancy Island and it just ends up bad. So I am Mr. Roar, your host. <laughs> I just want a chocolate chip cookie. That's your fantasy? Yes. <laughs> I want a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, let's see here. Hey, weren't you on the island of the man with the golden gun? <laughs> <laughs> Look at my abs. <laughs> Are uh, you con? <laughs> con? Wait. Uh, number one, because I always love a good deli. Monk's Cafe. Good deli food and a diner and that. So from Seinfeld. Yay. It's nice, laid back. I, I like the show, but I wouldn't want to hang out yeah. at Monk's. Yeah, a lot of women come in. You could get a lot of uh, numbers there. Back me up. I don't remember. I, I don't know how oh, you yeah. back you up on that. I mean, yeah, they sat around and ate. I no, mean. but there's a lot of women well, in there. Wait, wait, there, 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 there would be the women. cashier with the long fingernail yes. that would scratch your back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. I'm George, I'm unemployed. I'm 33 and I live at home. <laughs> I live with my yeah, parents. parents. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, what's your number one, Blake? Uh, I mean, the one that I haven't said yet. Yes. That's the one. Uh, Al's Diner. Oh. From Happy Days. Or Arnold's. Or Arnold's. Arnold's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Arnold's. Arnold's. It, Al's it, it, it well, hold on. Yeah, it was Arnold's. Tired. After yeah. it burned down and they rebuilt it, it was Fonzie Al. and Big Al's, which then they yes. went back and recalled it Arnold's again. Because yeah. <laughs> Fonzie and Big Al couldn't figure out on how, what to name it. Wow. <laughs> uh, any honorable mentions real quick? Fonzie jumped the shark? I, I yeah. thought you were saying Mel's Diner from Alice. No, no. no you were going it was after he built the... Yeah, uh, that, that was long after he jumped the shark. Yeah, yeah. Long after he built his... The uh, motorcycle blind. Uh, that might have been about yeah. the same time. <laughs> I can't was, see! <laughs> my okay. motorcycle! Okay, honorable mentions. I got the Royal Diner from Bones. Okay. Let's see. Cafe Nervoso. From uh, Fraser. Oh, hey. they don't serve alcohol at those places. I couldn't hang out there. And Ten Forward. What's that from? from? Star Trek: Next Generation. Yeah, you could t- have Whoopi Goldberg give you advice. I'd rather have Isaac. Is it no. the hologram bar? No, it's just the bar. Oh. Uh, Chris Richardson had three six five flicks. Had Central Perk and Friends, The Bronze and Buffy, The Drunken Clam and Family Guy. Fantasia in True Blood. Ooh, that would be kind of fun. Of course, you might get eaten. Fantasia in True Blood. No. And Corks Bar in Deep Space Nine. I thought it was uh, Merlots in True Blood. Uh, Fantasia. From True Dev, Blood. the Psy Guy. Where he was had Merlots. Be- would you shut up? Oh, okay. No, I won't <laughs> shut up. Beacon Street Pizza from Two Guys and a Girl. I love that answer. Uh, unfortunately, you also have two girls and a cup. Well, the, there the problem with that was they only did that in the first season. Oh. And it was actually a pretty boring hangout. Two girls, a guy in a pizza place? No, two guys, a girl in a pizza place. Yes, exactly. Eric Foreman's so basement, that's the guys, show. Two guys, a girl that looks like Sandy Duncan in a pizza place. <laughs> kind of got one eye. Uh, uh, Eric Foreman's basement from that 70s show. Moe's Tavern and the Drunken Clam. He hobied that shit. Monk's Restaurant from Seinfeld. And number one, Patty's Club. Uh, and Mc- McLaren's. And McLaren's Pub from uh, How I Met Your Mother. And Cheers. He hobied that, too. I, I will say I did honorable mention from How I Met Your mm-hmm. Mothers, but I honorable mentioned puzzles. I don't know that one. Why is it puzzles? Pu- That's the puzzle. It's the bar that uh, Ted and Barney wanted to make. Oh. And I would love to hang out at Puzzle. Moving on, honorable <laughs> mentions from Dev. He had Superior Donuts. Meh. From Superior Donuts. Bl- uh, Bluff's Frozen Banana Stand. Bluth. Whatever. Bluth, yeah. Arnold's. And JJ's Diner from Parks and Rec. From Brian Hackney. He had Coopers from King of Queens. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Monks from Seinfeld. The Regal Beagle from Three's Company. The Bada Bing from Sopranos. Of course, you're going to get shot. And Snake Hole Lounge from Parks and Rec. Honorable mention, Patty's Pub. And The Max from Saved by the Bell. When I was doing this list, I thought of the Regal Beagle. 
And then I realized how depressing of a place that is. Yeah. It's like well, Fox and Hounds. The, the Regal Beagle kind of reminds me of, uh, for the locals mm-hmm. here, uh, mm-hmm. of uh, the main entrance. Like where all the old people go? <laughs> no, no it, you, go, you go to the place because... Well, maybe because the main mm-hmm. entrance still looks like uh, the Regal Beagle did in the 70s. Mm-hmm. But. You show up there because you feel down and depressed, and you look at the people who are drinking there, and your self-esteem immediately goes up because you are not them. <laughs> and then you go date a model. <laughs> uh, let's see, Randall Holt, 666. He had Phil's from Murphy Brown. That's a good one. Yeah. Cheers, the Regal Beagle, the Officer's Club from MASH, and Moe's Tavern. Uh, Besotted Geek had the Monkey Bar from Tales of the Golden Monkey. He also uh, hobied it with Louie's Place from Tailspin. He hobied that. Did you know that Baloo is uh, trying to find his way home, but he can never get there? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Regal Beagle from Three's Company. Ten Forward from Star Trek Next Generation. Cork's Bar from Star Trek Deep Space Sign. Don't know what that shit is. Uh, Rick's Bar from Magnum P.I. And Cheers. Yeah, I forgot about Rick's Bar. And we Rick's also have one more. Place. Kevin from Cincy Explorer had Cheers, Central Perk, Porn Richards. Oh, That's from uh, The Office. The office. Monk's Cafe, and the Half Day Cafe and Home Improvement, but I don't think it really has an f- official name. So there you go. So there Home is Home Improvement your... hung out somewhere? Yeah, I do remember that a little bit. Not much, but there you go. But the backyard with uh, Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> I would take Kevin's bar in the office, too. Yes. That's a good one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did you know Toby was a Scranton Strangler? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he really was. Because there was that one episode where he went to visit the guy in jail. He told them he was innocent and he was the killer, and that's why he strangled him. I'm telling you, that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "I was on the jury, but I was really the guy who did it, and that's yes. why you're in jail." Ha ha ha. Yep. And the first thing he did was strangle, strangle someone. <laughs> 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 so, anyways, that's your uh, episode of Hobie. Thanks for listening. Uh, bad idea of the week number seven twenty five. Smelling a forty or a thirty year old Mossman figure from He Man. You did that today, didn't you? Oh. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Addendum title for the show. You I, got any? I got, uh, they didn't move the bodies. I had Pit of Snakes. Ooh, I like Pit of Snakes. <laughs> uh, Tangents. Uh, I hate Chad. And Make a Decision, Chad. I had Make a Decision, Chad, and they didn't move the bodies. <laughs> I wish I had my life back. <laughs> and uh, Lobot on a Segway. <laughs> Little bottle to segue. Uh, I do like they didn't move the bodies, and I like make a decision, Chad. I do like make a decision, Chad. I also like pit of snakes. I do like pit of snakes. What do you think, Jim? Make a decision, Chad. Okay, we made a decision. There, that was one of the quickest ones we ever did. And Blake just left, so let's talk bad about him. (laughs) Blake, 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 Blake. I'm a Blake bot. I'm Blake bot. (laughs) Zero chance I show up to the uh, expo. (laughs) Expo. (laughs) If I do show up, I'm going to be off. (laughs) I'll be in the green room the whole time drinking. (laughs) I'll be honest, we just did a two-hour podcast. I'm all tired out of jokes. (laughs) (laughs) Blake, 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 I'm done. I'm done. (laughs) Blake. You've been listening to Hobie!